অনুপম বোধে কনফার্ম করেছে বোধে থাকবে থাকতে পারবেন না বোধে হ্যাঁ অনুপম আমাকে তাই দুপুরে জানাবে আর আমাদের হেড তো থাক কোচিত তো থাকবে হ্যাঁ হেড না থাকলে তো মানে বাকিটা তেল দেখ তো কোনো ভালো নেই হেড ইজ দা মেন বন্ধ রাখি আর কি এই সময় আপনার কনজেসনটা বেশি সব থেকে না করবেন সব ওই অ্যাকচুয়ালি আমরা একটু আগে থেকে বলেছি করতে কারণ আপনার অনেক পার্টিসিপেন্ট তো মানে তখন একসঙ্গে জয়েন করতে গেলে আপনার কনজেসন এত হয়ে যায় তখন মানে ঠিকভাবে হতে চায় না আমরা আমাদের আশাটা মিত্র না মানে ভিসি প্রভিসি রেজিস্ট্রার আমি তিন থেকে জুলজি দেখতে চেয়েছিলাম কিন্তু আজকে প্রোগ্রামে হবে না হলো না আপনার <laughs> 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 হ্যালো অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটিভ এটা তো আমাদের সেভাবে মানে এক্সপেরিয়েন্স নেই এই যেটুকু আমাদের হেডশিপ করতে গিয়ে যেটুকু আমরা মানে এক্সপেরিয়েন্স করি আর কি হ্যাঁ ওইটাই তো হয় আমাদের তো জিডিসি চাই আমরা তো জিডিসি একটা মজা কি জানো তো রিসার্চ প্লাস এটা অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন প্যারালালি চলে হুম তারপরে আমার পুরো হচ্ছে ওই যেমন রিসার্চেও তোমাকে মানে তোমার <laughs> 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 ভালো জিনিস
अनुपम बोलोपमेंडल मैं लाखी सबा पे बारो जन जयन कर जदवपुर पक्षारिजा करते मानसारा <laughs> 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 
যেমন ভাবে ভাইরাস রেখেছে সেরকম আছি আর কি মানুষ <laughs> কিন্তু <laughs> দাদাং <laughs> 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 আমি তো ক্যামেরা অন করি দেখেছি আমি একটু দেখা দিতেই ভালোবাসি আমি ওই যে অভিজিৎ দের মতো লুকিয়ে থাকতে ভালোবাসি বোঝো কেন বলবো না কেন একটু রোহান কালার নেই তো তাহলে কি করে হবে মানুষ দাকে দেখতে পাচ্ছি মানুষ দা হয়তো আমাদেরকে চিনতে পারবে না তোমাদের মতো অত মিউটেশন হওয়ার ক্ষমতাই আমার নেই শুধু মিউটেশন হয়ে যাচ্ছে তোমাদের প্রতিটা ফেজে ফেজে মিউটেশন হচ্ছে আর আমার দেখো দেখো মানুষ আমার কোনো মিউটেশন নেই কিন্তু তুমি চুল পালো দেখতে হবে আমি সেই জন্যই তো বলছি যে তোমার পিরিয়ড অফ কনস্ট্যান্সি চলছে এখন ইভোলিউশনারি ব্রেকডাউন হয়নি বলে হ্যাঁ সেই জন্য ভাইরাসও কিছু করতে পারছে না তোমাকে এ ভাইরাস করেছে ওটা বললাম হ্যাঁ করেছে করেছে ভাইরাস দিন একু একুশ দিন মতো শুয়ে রেখেছিল তখন বুঝতে পারি নাই যে করোনা হয়েছে কিন্তু পরে বুঝেছিলাম যে অন্য লোকের দেখে যে ওটা আমারও করোনা ছিল আমারও করোনা হয়েছিল অপূর্বকে ছাড়েনি না ছাড়েনি আমার বাড়ি সুদ্ধ ধরেছিল একদম পুরো আইসোলেশন হয়ে গেছিলাম আমি একটা ঘরে আমার মিশেস একটা ঘরে ছেলে একটা ঘর আমাদের বর্ধমান মেডিকেল কলেজ হসপিটালে এইটা আমার একটা বড় পাওনা আর কি যে বাড়ির কাছে করতে পারছে তোমাকে
and good, good evening sir how are you yeah good evening sir good evening good evening yeah party good evening ha yeah, good evening so ঠিক সাতটাতেই শুরু হবে তো না দেরি হবে অভিজিৎ স্যার অনুপম তো সাতটা একদম ইয়ে করে দিয়েছে টাইমলাইন করে দিয়েছে হ্যাঁ আমি সেই জন্য তো ভয় ভয় সাড়ে ছটে ঢুকে পড়লাম সেটা ঠিকই করেছে তুমি না আমা আমাকে বলেছে পয়টা আমাকে বলেছে ছটা পয়তালিশে ঢুকতে আমি ছটা পয়তালিশে ঢুকেছি না এই সময় কনজেশন হয়ে যায় তো খুব হ্যাঁ 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 তাহলে পড়ার দিকে না ডোর चले <laughs> फ्लैटे हायदराबाद मुम्बईर <laughs> दरकार <laughs> जयंती <laughs> चेस्ट <laughs> <laughs> 
তাহলে তার আনন্দ দেখলেই হবে তো এ বলছি একজন তাও ভিসি স্যার কে ফোনটা করো ওই ইয়ে আশিস দা একবার করবেন হ্যাঁ ভিসি স্যার কে ফোনটা করো জানো স্যার সাত তাই হ্যাঁ তাহলে তো মানে স্যার আছেন তো আমি দেখলাম স্যার ইয়েতে ছিলেন কোথায় ছিল ও দেখলাম ইয়েতে হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ একটু আগে তো আমি দেখছিলাম এই দে তো আমরা মিস করলাম বুঝলে আসলে এতগুলো তো হট করে মিস হলো আচ্ছা স্যার এখানে ছিলেন ওই তো অনুপম দা চলে হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ তিন সাইন্স এই সমস্ত প্রোগ্রামে থাকতে ভালোবাসে ওই আমাদের 350 জন রেজিস্ট্রেশন করে তো আর আইসো জন থাকবে এতে গুগল মিটেতে আর বাকিরা থাকবে ইউটিউবে লাইভ টেলিকাস্টে ভালো ভালো এখন মাত্র 60 59 দেখতে পাচ্ছি পার্টিসিপেশন মানে এক্লি এপ্রিল মধ্যে এই বোম্বার্ড হবে পার্টিসিপেশনটা না তুমি এই এই লিংকটাতে হয়তো এটা দেখতে পাচ্ছো অন্য লিংকটা হয়তো আরো জয়েন করেছে না এই লিংকে একটাই আছে তে না ওই যে ইউটিউব যেটা এটা জয়েন করছে না হ্যাঁ আজ মিনিটের মধ্যে জয়েন করতে দিচ্ছে ঠিক আছে আচ্ছা অনুপম হ্যাঁ আমি একটা কথা তোমাকে জিজ্ঞাসা করে নিচ্ছি হ্যাঁ বলছি এটা হচ্ছে যে সেটা বলছে মনে করো অসিতা লেকচারের পরে তো ডিসকাশনের জন্য মাত্র 5 মিনিট রেখেছে হ্যাঁ তো প্রশ্নগুলো তো মানে ইয়ের ডাইরেক্ট মুখে তো করবে না না ওরা বল দেয়া হবে আসিফ বল দেবে সবাই প্রশ্নগুলো চ্যাট বক্স থেকে লিখে দেবে ওই চ্যাট বক্স থেকে আসিফ কিংবা আপনি থ্রো করবেন স্পিকারে কাছে স্পিকার হতে যে সম্ভব না হয় ওটা ওটা তোমরা তোমরা ইয়ে করো হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ ওটা ওটা আসিফ ওটাকে বলা আছে ওটাকে আসিফ ঠিক বলে যে ও কোন কোন প্রশ্নগুলো ইয়ে করবে আর উত্তরের জন্য পাঠাবে সেই তো ইসি তো করা যাবে না চার পাঁচটা হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ তারপর আবার মানুষের আছে তারপর মানুষের কথা চেক করো झारखंड दार अनुपम तुम
डिपार्टमेंट गुलाबबाग कैम्पास फील फर आवर टीचार्स फील फर आवर राजबाटी कैम्पास एंड आवर क्लसरूम्स friends we have already passed out from this beautiful department we may be start our journey different directions kintu bondhu kobir bhashay purano sei diner kotha bulbi kire hai o sei chokher dekha praner kotha sei ki bola jay pura sukher dukher kotha kobo pran jurabe tai हाय माझे बोलो छाला छारी गेलेम को कोथाय फ्रेंड्स बट जर्नी नेवर स्टॉप दिस क्लासरूम्स नाउ आर फिल्ड विद द न्यू स्टूडेंट्स द न्यू फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस डिपार्टमेंट्स फॉर देम वी आर हियर इन दिस इवनिंग साइद कुबीर भाषा एक बार बोलते हाय हे नूतन देखा दिक आर बार जन्मेर प्रथम शुभक्षण दिगंत शख बजे मोर चित्त मे चिरपार्टमेंट एसेंबल हेयर फर यू and for the you and for the you geological association about the university always thinks they have the responsibility to serve this alma mater with that of words may i request our president of the society association dr ak hajra to welcome post the welcome address professor hajra sir Thank you. Good evening, Anupam. Officer Mahasaib. Good evening to everybody. Those who have joined now. The third is today. It's a it's a moment. Pleasure to all of you present in this memorable occasion. On behalf of the newly created Jyoti Alumni Association, Bardhaman University. I like to welcome Honorable B.C. Officer Niman Dosaha, Professor Sir. I don't know whether he has already joined or not. To Officer Ashish. No, he has joined. Yes, sir. He has joined. Okay. Welcome, welcome Ashish, <clears throat> and the deans of Faculty of Science. Probably has joined. Not faculty of science. Chakravarti. Yes, I have joined. Yes. Okay. Welcome, sir. Dean Thank faculty you. Faculty of. Thank you, sir. Join. Officer Short. Officer Short. Okay. He may be joining soon. Okay. Anyway, honourable speakers, panelists, head of the zoology department, associate chairs of the department of zoology, Bardhaman University, the principals, head of the zoology, and the associate professors of the zoology department of the various colleges. 
academicians and my dear students of geology who are member or non-member of the association. And last but not the least, to all the dignitaries of the Zilaman Alumni Association, Vardhaman University, portfolio holders, and the members of JABU, the AABU, which is our logo, for joining us in this memorable event. I convey my regards. In spite of his busy schedule, he has accepted our invitation and agreed to inaugurate the function and joining the webinar. My cordial welcome to everyone of Jaibu who made the occasion possible within very short period of all of you. In this occasion, no VCF and HOD uh, to permit us to use the address of the Department of Geology, Bhattana University, as official address of the <coughs> Jabu Alumni Association. This is my humble request to VCC, Pro VCC, and HOD of Geology. To allow us to use the address of the Geology Department at uh, Jabu, that is the Association. With all these few words, I welcome you, all of you. Thank you very much for kindly giving me this opportunity to speak before you. Thank you, sir, all of you. Thank you, sir. So, bidding the world, nice welcome to all our guests and members. Before proceeding to the next events, may I request all the participants and the dignitaries present here to please mute your microphone unless you are speaking for that. So uh, you know there is a digital platform. It, we can uh, then in good way, we can uh, continue the program. So may I request Professor Nimachandra Sah, sir, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, so we are waiting for you to listen to you to, uh, to place under your leadership or association can be progressed. Sir, so requesting for your delivered in your address, sir. sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Anupam. Good evening to all the alumni of the Department of Geology. Respected Dr. Ashish Kumar Hajra, BSc, Emeritus Scientist, Geological Survey of India, distinguished alumni, and the President of Geology, Geology Alumni Association of Burman University, Professor Anadi Prasad Nundi, our eminent alumnus, Professor Shubhrat Roy, our another eminent alumnus, Professor Asish Kumar Panikrahi, Provost Chancellor, the University of Badwan, Professor Pavitra Kumar Chakraborty, Dean Science, Professor Ramin Kumar Saur, Dean Arts, Commerce, etc. Professor Koushi Ghosh, Head of the Department, Department of Geology, Professor Gautam Chando, Professor Obhijit Mojumdar, respected other faculty members of the department, <coughs> Distinguished alumni, honorable speakers present here, research scholars, and students of the department. On behalf of the University of Bardwan and the Department of Zoology, I extend my warm and hearty welcome to all the alumni residing overseas and within our country. No doubt, today is a historical occasion where the past meets the present. Our alumni are the reflection of our institution's past representation of its present and a link to its future. Our alumni are the brand ambassadors of our institution. They are the resources of our university. They are providing meaningful and mutually beneficial relationships over time. As an ardent and curious follower of zoology, I'm honored to be invited to deliver the inaugural address in this August gathering. As I, as I gather today, Geology Alumni Association of Bardwan University, Jabu, is gradually taking momentum from a, a scattering stream to an expanding expanse of the river spray. This metamorphosis was made, possibly, made possible by the active and jealous working committee members 
that were formed in January 2019 with the active support of the head department of zoology and a few faculty members. As I find out that it was during the Golden Jubilee reunion and alumni meet held on 5th January 2019, the formative decisions were resolved, but due to the pandemic, things got delayed. This gala event linked the wisdom of the past students with the enthusiastic present generation of students to chart and comprehend the trajectory of the future ahead. The Alumni Association under the aegis of the Department of Zoology is organizing the first memorial lecture, that is Professor D.K. Choudhury Memorial Seminar on Advances in Geological Sciences and its Prospects, followed by an apt panel discussion on career opportunities within the box and out of the box. This is to honor and respect the footprints is by the legendary, highly motivated faculty and support staff of this department. The two-day event will be illuminated by various deliberations and panel discussions by our dis distinguished alumni, as Dr. Ashish Kumar Hazra, DSC Emeritus Scientist, Geological Survey of India, Professor Shushant Kumar Banerjee, Professor, Professor Hematology and Oncology, Research Director, Cancer Research Institute, VA Medical Center, Kansas City, USA, Professor Soibal De, Professor and Associate Dean, Graduate Studies, School of Medicine, Uniform Service University, USA, Dr. Manoj Sarkar, Science Platform, Global Research and Development, Pest and Entomology Division, Gurgaon, Professor Unupam Chatterjee, Department of Biotechnology, Northeastern Hill University, Dr. Shoshi Dulal Ghosh, Director of Business Advice for Professionals, India, Dr. Shuchata Banerjee, Director of Clinical Development Services Agency, Translational Health Science and Technology Institute, DBT, Minister of Science and Technology, Government of India, Gurgaon, Dr. Obhijit De, Principal Investigator and Scientific Officer E, Molecular Functional Imaging Laboratory, Tata Memorial Center, Navi, Mumbai, Maharashtra. The technical support of this program will be provided by our alumni, Dr. Devnaran Rai, Principal, Jharkhand Raj College. As I learned that Jabu has planned to hold a series of lectures involving various alumni from academics, organizations, and from different walks of life. It is also in the process to collect and prepare the exhaustive list of alumni. Now I am proud and privileged to present only few distinguished alumni as an example to our extinct students. But I assure all that the list is so exhaustive and long that if I start reading it, I will run out of time. Some of the notable alumni serving various universities, institutes, organizations are Professor Umkumar Roy, Professor Eske Moitro, Professor Shantanu Roy, Professor Sudipta Moitro, Professor Deepak Mondal, Vishwarati, Professor Shoilas Chattopadhyay, Bishwas Agricultural University, Professor Gautam Kumar Shaha, Professor Santosh Kumar Shorkar, Calcutta University, Professor Rina Chakraborty, Delhi University, Professor Asim Mukherjee, Banaras Hindu University, Professor Tapos Kumar Choudhury, North Bengal University, Professor D N Das, Rajiv Gandhi University, Dr. Biplop Dasgupta, Assistant Professor. UG Department of Pediatrics, Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, Ohio, Dr. Unutas Chakraborty, Assistant Professor, the Scripps Research Institute, Florida, Dr. Borna De, Scientist, NIH, USA, Dr. Prosun Kanta Moitro, Food and Drug Administration, USA, Dr. Korobi Moitro, Assistant Professor, Trinity Washington University, Dr. Dittiman Samanto, Assistant Professor, Department of Microbiology and Immunology, Midwestern University, USA, Dr. Nandan Kumar Mondal, Assistant Professor, Department of Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgery, University of Blouseville, USA, Dr. Viraj Mahato, Senior Scientist, Nanoscope Technologies, Dallas, USA, Dr. Shubhas Chandra Das, DRD of Himachal Pradesh, Dr. Kartik Mondal, Joint Director, Dr. Atul Kumar Shah, Scientist, Dr. Taputi, Doctor Scientist, Central Silkulture Research and Training Institute, Central Silk Board, Dr. S. K. Gupta, Emeritus Scientist, Joint Director, Dr. Guru Pada Mondal, Scientist D. Geological Survey of India, Government of India, Dr. D. Kaur Choudhury, Chief Scientist, CSIR, Indian Institute of Toxicological Research, Lucknow, and many others. Besides, many alumni are 
Besides, many alumni are serving various schools and numerous colleges throughout the country. The Department of Zoology has a long, glorious history, which I would like to share with my dear students. Every brick and every corner of this department unfolds a repository of stories. The department set its foot on the academic canvas in the first week of March 1968 with few students with dedicated and legendary teachers and professors like Dika Choudhury and G. Mojumdar and few non teaching members. Present accomplishment by the, by the Department of Zoology has earned a reputation, accolades, and a recognition by several state and national agencies. I'm extremely proud to announce that the department has been recognized to implement the prestigious flagship programs FIST project level two. We have received grant 2.10 crores sponsored by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, New Delhi. Besides, it has been recognized by UGC, SAP, DRS, support. Presently, a team of dedicated, very enthusiastic faculty members, total, all total in this moment, 16, 16 faculty members is in, are engaged in high quality teaching and research, which has led to the high quality publications that is the highest I-10 index of 96, average impact factor of publications 3.69, number of SCI publications 286, number of PhD awarded 68. In the postgraduate course, the different basic and applied disciplines as the major active, major act electives offered are molecular biology and genetics, aquaculture and fishery, ecology and environmental biology, entomology, parasitology and microbiology. Every year, a considerable number of students qualify the national examinations like NET, GET, SET, and others. Research works of the faculty members are receiving recognition from the funding agencies like UGC, CSIR, DST, DBT, ICMR, ICAR, MOEF, West Bengal DST, DAT, STB, etc., who are providing extramural funds. Cumulative last five years extramural fund is about 166.71 lakhs. For several research projects, in the last five years, the department has received extramural funding support of more than rupees five crores for the faculty members to cater their respective research. Present major thrust area of research are ecotoxicology, bioremediation, natural products and its application, biosystematics of deep terrain insects and strepsiptran parasitoids, cancer research, nutritional analysis of human genetical diseases, chemical ecology, nutritional ecology, biocontrol, ultrastructure of fish organs, fish nutrition and probiotics, vector control by microbial agents, predators and phytochemicals, soil bacterial diversity, metal toxicities on Drosophila melanogaster, cancer immunology, helminth taxonomy and biomedical agencies. As the vice chancellor of this university and a member of this department, we are striving to achieve academic excellence of our department in particular. This is only possible through the active participation and feedback from the alumni. We should declare the list of our notable alumni with their success in our university website for the encouragement of the future students. In this era of social networking, the connection with our past students will not be any problem. A strong and a positive relationship with our alumni can benefit us socially, academically, and professionally. At present, our university is changing the way to see and interact with our alumni community. With the advent of social media, alumni relationship has favored altogether. We should start to harness the power of alumni through various networking platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, etc., by creating our alumni groups and profiles on us. An effective alumni network can assure our alumni as a significant stakeholder by making them actively participate in the developmental activities of our university. I sincerely hope that with strong network of alumni and their sustained guidance will enable us to venture into new areas of science and technology, synthetic biology, mimetics, etc., and foster the spirit of exploration and deep passion towards this subject. Finally, I shall request our alumni to help our students to get the place at their respective organizations. 
to play an effective role in voluntary programs like mentoring students with a huge talent pool in their areas of expertise and to take a significant role in contributing scholarships to deserving students. With these few words, I want to conclude my talk. Finally, I would like to inaugurate the program of Geology Alumni Association of Burdwan University, Jabu, and wish a grand success of the Jabu endeavors. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Your kind words and describing our progress of the department enlightened us about the present condition of this department and we, the alumni, are benefited by your words and your guidance. Thank you, sir. Now, may I request our professional sir, sir, sir A.K. Panigrai, to address this uh, August gathering. Please, sir. Thank you, Anupam. Good evening to everybody. I am very happy to know that the Geology Alumni Association of the Bordhaman University is going to organize Dr. D.K. Choudhury Memorial Seminar on Advances in Geological Science and its prospect and panel discussion on career opportunities within the box and out of the box with the technical support of Postgraduate Department of Geology, Jhargam Raj College under DBT Star College scheme. First of all, I convey my heartfelt to Professor Himai Chandra Saha, the Vice Chancellor of this university and a dynamic geologist of present day era. Then I convey my gratitude to Dr. A.K. Hadra, PSC, Emeritus Scientist, JSI, and President of Geological Geology Alumni Associations of Bardhaman University, then Professor A.P. Nandi, Professor Alan Mondal, Professor Gautam Chandra, all the vice presidents of this organization, Professor Abhijit Majumdar, Professor Anupam Basu, Professor Koushi Ghosh, the joint secretaries of this organization, of the association, to invite me in the inaugural session of this webinar. Thanks are due to our registrar, Professor Devidas Mandal, Dean Science Professor Kovitra Chakraborty, Dean Arts and Commerce Professor Roman Shor for their gracious presence in this association. I am also thankful to all the alumni members of this Geological Association of Bordhaman University for their active participation in this two-day webinar, especially Dr. Manas Sarkar, Head Global Science Platform, Gurugaon India, Professor Shoibal Roy, School of Medicines, Uniform Service, University of the Health Science USA, Dr. Dev Narayan Roy, WC members, JAABU, Professor Prasanta Banarji, Research Director, Cancer Research Unit, University of Kansas, USA, and the panelists, especially Professor Unupam Chatarji, Northeastern Hill University, Shillong, Dr. Sachidural Ghosh, Director of Pet Private Limited India, Dr. Sucheta Banarji, Constitutional Health Science, and Technology Institutes, DBT Government of India, Madhavad, Dr. Abhijit Dev, ACTREC, Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai, and the Reunion and Cultural Event Coordinator, Mr. Orimal Kumar Samanto, WC member of JABU, and Professor A.R. Ghosh, WC member, ZAABU for their kind presence and inviting me to remain here as a guest of honor. So this, today I am very happy to see the presence of galaxy of eminent personalities who will take part in the different scientific deliberations and discussion on the topic geological science and its prospect. As a geologist, I just want to say 
that the prospect and advances in geological science is everlasting for its diversified branches of specializations. The present day meritorious students are showing their interest for higher study as well as research work in this field. And this alumni meet no doubt will help the present students and the faculties to have a good interaction with the alumni, the passed out previous students who are now presently posted in different parts of the world in their dignitaries. And that this interaction, student interaction will help them to enrich and to understand the present day importance of geological science. So our vice chancellor have already mentioned everything in the prospect of geological science and the past and present scope of geological science. So I will not take more time to say anything more in this regard. So last but the least I convey my heartfelt gratitude to all the organizers and the geology alumni of this university, the students, the faculty members, and the resource persons who will deliver their lecture in different aspects of geological science. And I, lastly, I wish this webinar and the geology alumni meet a grand success. Thank you to you all. Namaskar. Now, on behalf of the Working Committee, Geological Alumni Association of Bardwan University, may I request Professor Onupam Basu, Joint Secretary of JABU, to tell few words about Geological Alumni Association of Bardwan and Professor uh, D.K. Chaudhuri Memorial Seminar. Sir, please. A respected Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, our President Jabu Dr. Hajra, Provisi Dr. Panigrahi, my teacher Professor Roy, Professor Nondi, Dean Faculty of Science, Professor Professor Dr. Murthy, Dean Arts, Professor Sir, Head Department of Geology, Professor Kausik Khos, and all the Vice Presidents of the Jabu, and all the members of the Working Committee of the Jabu, and all the alumni members of the association or all the alumnus across the globe presenting viewing this se seminar to the every corner from the part. Faculty members of this Department of Geology, my fellow students, the scholars, and all of you. It is indeed a great moment to announce that in the history of Geology Department, this is the first time alumni association of the Geology BU is organizing a program by its own. So on the behalf of the Jabu, I'd like to thank our fellow alumnus to share their emotion to organize this program. Jabu is very happy that the first program is inaugurated by none other than our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Saha. Thank you, Sir, for taking time in your extreme busy schedule. Thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Dean Science, for their encouragement and our future guidance for our roadmap from the Alumni Association. Friends, history always a good teacher for the future direction. Though the department has already crossed 50 years, but previously we don't have the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association has been initiated in the year 2014. In the department committee of the meeting had resolved at the time the formation of alumni association. The Didian Vice Chancellor had kindly endorsed this administrative approval from alumni association formation. I must acknowledge the role of the Didian EC member and the principal of Sudhi with the Sagar College, Professor Ellen Mundal, and at present the Jabu Vice President for, for getting role, for getting administrative approval. I feel good at that time personally. I was the charge of the head of the department at that time. But after that, nothing has been developed, only guaranteeing administrative approval. So again, no progress in the alumni association. Friends, we are not disheartened. 
আই লাইক টু রিমেম্বার আমি বাংলায় কবির ভাষায় বলতে চাই জীবনে যত পুজো হলো না সারা জানি হে জানি তাও হয় নিহারা যে ফুল না ফুটিতে ধরেছে ধর নিতে জানি যে নদী মরু পথে হারালো ধারা জানি হে জানি তাও হয় নিহারা বন্ধু আমরা হারিয়ে যাইনি বন্ধু আমাদের ইমোশন এখনো ব্যক্ত আছে তাই আবার আবার যখন আমরা কোপ স্কোপ পেয়েছি টু থাউজেন্ড ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ জুলজি যখন গোল্ডেন জুবলি সেলিব্রেশন করছেন যখন রিউনিয়নের কথা হচ্ছে তখন আমরা আবার আমাদের ইমোশনটাকে জাগিয়ে তুলেছি and the EC working committee has been formed. In that meeting, it has been decided that those who have paid for the registration for the reunion also be the annual members of this working association. But at part the global pandemic situation for an other constraint, for a long time, we had not any meeting. The first working committee meeting held on 27th of June, 2021. In this very first meeting, we have decided to organize this two days program and dedicated to our founder of this department as gk choudhury memorial seminar advances zoological science and its prospects so this is the part of this program we are launching within short period of time so i thanks all of us all of you to shouldering responsibility to organizing this program in that meeting we have already decided to save our alumnus association so it has been decided to form our bylaws all the paraphernalia for that we have decided to membership fee i like to announce we have decided there is a 200 annual membership for the student memberships and annual membership and we have the live membership 300 and among them 100 will be the admission fee soon soon we will launch our membership drive through online portal we have decided that as our our uh, president has announced that we will organize a monthly webinar. We also like to work in the close contact with the geology department. So we have already decided this monthly webinar will be jointly organized by the Department of Geology and Alumni Association. So we have organized a, a team of mixture of the Alumni Association and the geology, team, uh, geology of the department faculty. So I'd like to announce this name who is responsible for both the Alumni Association and the, both the geology department faculty member. Dr. Asif Hussain, Dr. Mutusi Mandi, Mr. Sujit Chattaraj, Dr. Paramita Mondal, Dr. Anirban has, has requested to take the responsibility and soldering that monthly open organization as a good beginning for the scientific journey. It has also been decided we have to open our association bank account. We need to address. We are happy that in that August meeting, we're having the presence of our vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, dean, and all of you. Sir, may we request on behalf of the alumni association to please give the permission to use the departmental address for the address of the association and the face. So this request I'm placing before you, sir, all of you. Friend, now let me tell you briefly about this two days program. Uh, all it the is permitted, permitted. Thank you, sir, thank you, sir. Friend, now, to, sir, I, I look, there are lots of clap to sir. Ah. Please give a clap. Please clap. Hmm. Thank you, sir, sir. Yes, we are very happy, very happy to get the, our permission from using the address, all these details for that. Friends, now let me tell you briefly about the two days program. All the speaker and panelists are our proud alumni of this department. All the seminar talk would be mostly popular scientific talk. The so students of the UG and PG and the scholar are very much uh, get the basic idea of the science. The panel discussions of the present students and scholar to motivate for their career prospect and finding the career motivation for this way. So I hope that tomorrow's panel discussion will be very boosting for our young students. They are students. Who is the alumni? You are Dana and Didi. We are for always for you. For you. Amna tomadhe chunno. Amna chai. Amna tomadhe chunno. 
तत्व कथा कविर बाणी नयी बोलो ए सत्य तब्य अहंकार हाँ छात्ररा सबाई तुम्हारा अहंकार अहंकार तुम्हारा पार्बे तुम्हारे आई बोले बक्तव्य शेष कर चक्रवर्ती A few say up or a few awards for this our program. So, Dr. Kothi sir, thank you. Uh, very good. Onupam, actually, it's a very nice <coughs> evening. Very good evening to all the learned members who are in this virtual platform. Uh, actually, here in this platform, uh, I am also just. I want to introduce myself. Though I am a dean of dean science, still I must uh, share with you that I am also alumni of the University of Patna, and I am student of Department of Physics. Actually, Department of Physics and Department of Geology just the opposite side of the great pond, which is lying in the campus of our very beautiful campus in the uh, I mean Bolabag. so in that in the larger concept we are all alumni in this platform and i must acknowledge the department of geology uh, for such type of beautiful initiatives which have been taken uh, here in this virtual platform i must uh, acknowledge the presence of our honorable vice chancellor professor nimai chandra shah and he had already given the inaugural address and also we have with us professor ashish kumar panigrahi and dean of arts professor ramen kumar sod and also we have with us professor obhijit mojumdar he had served long time as a registrar of officiating and he had proved himself that professor mojumdar is not only an academician but also a good administrator and we have also with us here the president of this jabu dr ak hazra and also head of the department of geology my dear koushik professor koushik go and also professor onupam basu my dear onupam and also all the faculty members of the department of geology and i hope we are also we have with us professor ap nomdi dr ashish kumar hazra professor elen mondol dr manush sarkar who will deliver their ideas and share their knowledge in the larger concept to enrich our department of geology and particularly for the students and actually this is a day two days program and ideas of the uh, initiation actually though it is a basically alumni meet still i must mention the fact that behind the schedule there are so many frontier activity which are to be covered or discussed in the students program so that's a very good and unique idea and my i must as a stakeholder of this university i must acknowledge uh, this idea and this thinking actually geology uh, is a very well known department of our university 
and uh, you know that University of Padua is one of the oldest university of West Bengal, and so many though there are running so many postgraduate departments, geology department is really a very good and very large department where at present we are running not only master degree program, MPhil program, PhD program, and also in some cases, DSC program. I think there are 14 faculty members at present. And so far I know all the faculty members, all the faculty members are highly active and all are actively involved, not only in the departmental projects, but also in the individual project. That's a very good sign. I think uh, in the context of uh, individual projects, geology is the one of the most important department where all the faculty members are actively involved for the individual faculty members. And also uh, they are running DST Feast. And in recent, very recently, they have been qualified for the DST Feast level two. And it's a very good sign for the recent trains in research in the context of national scenario, as well as international scenario. And also, uh, though the UGC SAP program are being stopped, still UGC DRS and BSR special grants are also, I mean, active in the Department of Geology. And most of the funding agencies, like UGC, CSIR, ACRB, DST, DVT, ICMR, ICR, West Bengal DST, they have funded in various aspects. I think more than five crores, uh, maybe more, more than five crores, is it so, Koshi? Uh, considering the individual project and cash and uh, fees, more than five. That's a very good sign. And the experimental facilities in the Department of Geology at present is very good, which is really appreciated. Because uh, most of the faculty members are actively involved in the frontier line of research, which is also a very good sign. And you'll be glad to know that actually from the initiation of the Department of Geology, there are another subject. We are, we are going to open another important department, uh, molecular biology and human genetics. And from this current session, this department will be open and main initiatives have been taken from the Department of Geology. And the research activities of the Department of Geology are very encouraging. And uh, in various aspects, they are, I mean, earning various awards in different fields. And it's, I think it will be continued as the departmental faculty members, including the department, is a very vibrant uh, department. So this initiative, particularly this initiative where all the renowned distinguished alumni of the department are here, they will give us the direction so that we get the proper way for our overall de development, not only for the department, but also for the university as a whole, so that we can proceed. Because most of the alumni who are here in this virtual platform are holding very distinguished position. And their advice, their supervision, their suggestion, I think we must note everything so that we can utilize their suggestion, their advice, their concept for the overall development of the department as well as the university. And also, most of the students are now really frustrated, particularly in this 
pandemic situation because most of the students are not able to come in the department and they are continuing their classes by means of online and really for science subject online may be helpful for the continuation for some time but now it cannot be solution for a year after year because though because, because right now students are being frustrated to continue to continue their education from their home particularly from the experimental point of view and the researchers are really are helpless in this situation we must particularly at this moment we have to work out jointly so that we can do something particularly for those who are confined in the i mean home and most of the lads are not properly learning in this situation so we have to work out because here are so many noble persons are here distinguished person are here their ideas their thoughts their beliefs will help us to overcome this situation and before conclusion i just want to mention few things actually how is he to gain a knowledge as a teacher as a stakeholder we have to work out so that students cannot be frustrated at all during his study whenever they are in the campus that's why i just want to mention the fact how is he to gain a knowledge of the subject for the all round development of the department as a whole and next i just want to mention what is the most suitable method of solution because as you see the students are not being attracted so much for the general education basic science education students are opting fast for iit medical science etc we the academic students particularly you the distinguished persons he was the direction so that we may gauge the or we may work out the problem we we may work out a solution to overcome this problem actually what is the most suitable method of solution to attract the young generation in this particular domain of basic science i mean geology is a very very i mean important subject in the context of basic science so we have to attract the students for the all round development all round development means for the department university society as a whole so we have to work out this is the high time otherwise it would be difficult to survive because really students are not, are not opting the general or basic science this is the third choice maybe fourth choice what is the reason because we know very much that basic science can do everything particularly in the first world you know basic science is the first level of attraction but as in our country it is not the fact what is the reason that we have to work out and actually we must think another thing without the development without the development of basic or fundamental science it is really developed or it is really improved the research and development of the country and without development of the research and development of the country you cannot think the all round development of the science and technology of the country so these are the integrated step i mean attraction towards basic science then research and development and then science and technology and industry evolution so these are the way of thinking is the high time we must think here we have so many distinguished 
calumny with us. We are us. We are very much hopeful, sir, that we will get the right direction from you so that we can enrich ourselves for our future generation. Thank you all. Very good evening, all of you. Thank you, sir. You have raised a very good uh, problem of the current curriculum, basic science, applied science, clear prospect, choice of the discipline. And we all the teachers all face that problem when we interact with our students for their futures. For that direction, tomorrow we have the special, uh, as you also mentioned that, special panel discussion. I like to mention you that in that panel discussion, the spectrum of different sphere of the, our job opportunity, like from in university, industry, innovation, uh, entrepreneurships, and R&D, all will be there and all our alumni. So I hope in that discussion session, I'm again requesting all the students, the students, please put their problem and they are must be market leaders. They can help, help to show up some path for that. Thank you, sir, for giving such an innovative talk. Thank you very much. Now, I suppose to get the talk of our honorable Dean of Arts Science, Arts, but he may not be able to join right now. So I'm requesting our head, who's a coach coach, to address the program. Thank you, Anuponga. So, good evening. And uh, today we are really blessed by the presence of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Nimai Chandra Saha, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Ashish Kumar Panigrahi, respected president of our association, Dr. Ashish Kumar Hajra, our Dean Faculty of Science, Professor Kovitra Chakraborty, our respected teacher, Professor Subroto Roy, our Vice Presidents, Professor Nondi, Professor Mondol, and Professor Chondo, and all respected faculty members, distinguished alumni and uh, participants, other dignitaries, and also my beloved students. Now, being an alumnus of this great department, it's a dream that comes true. After all, we are going to form a registered alumni association of the department. As the background has already been stated very beautifully by Professor Hajre, Professor Basu. And you know that this year also in a meeting of the departmental committee held in April this year, we unanimously resolved to revive the activities of the alumni association and also to form a registered alumni association. And with this aim, after the rejuvenation 2019, on 5th January 2019, again, we have gathered here on this virtual platform. Now, all of we must agree that a 53 years of dedicated service towards the society and the nation is really a matter of pride for any institution or department. And during this long journey, the department has produced many distinguished alumni who are now glittering by their own and have become the brand ambassadors of this department, as rightly said by our Honorable Vice Chancellor. And we are fortunate that we'll, be, we'll have the opportunity to learn something from such brand ambassadors in this today's program. And you know that at the initial stage, the department was housed in the old building of the Maharaja at the Golabba campus. And it was shifted to its present premises only in the year 1974. And you know that during this time, the Department of Geology is one of the reputed and acclaimed departments, not only in the state, but also in the country. And at present, a team of 15 faculty members are engaged in teaching and research with high quality publications. And it is an honor for us that our Honorable Vice Chancellors are also actively engaged in research with us in our department. 
The research works by the faculty members are getting recognition from the different funding agencies. And to continue the research endeavor, the department has also executed the collaborative research opportunities with several national and international organizations. Few I would like to mention, suppose the University of Florida, USA, University of Plymouth, UK, University of Tromso, Norway, and many more. And as you have already come to know, that based on the research and teaching performance, the department has been very recently recognized for the feast level to support by the DST government of India. And about the alumni association, I just want to mention a few words that what does an association mean? A group of people organized for a joint purpose. So at the very beginning, we need to identify the purpose. The purpose is to link the past with the present and the present with the future. Thus, making the family from a smaller one to a much bigger one, to linking one generation with the other generation. However, I want to put a caution over here, because whenever an association of such kind with the heterogeneous age group forms, it's not a very easy duty to maintain the integrity of the association. And here lies the responsibility of the department. Because whoever may be, the only common factor that made all of the alumni into the common stream is the department. So without involvement of the department, the association may not sustain in the long run. So my humble request to the faculty members who are serving at present or who might be associated in the days to come, that always consider that you are the custodian of this treasure box. The association should function intricately with the department, should shoulder the responsibilities for betterment of the course curricula, empowering the next generations, creating research and infrastructure facilities, and connecting people from different corners for the need of the department, and so on. If you notice carefully, then you will see that each and every successful department may have a very strong alumni base. And you know that in the assessment criteria by the different national and international agencies, the likely contribution of an alumni association has been apprehended. So considering all these things, the association must set the priority areas by which it can stand beside the department. I will be happy to see if the Alumni Association and also the Geological Association of the Bardwal may have an office space at the department and coordinate their academic, social, and outreach activities complementing the department. Later, I must appreciate that this alumni webinar has been dedicated to the memory of our founder head late Professor D.K. Choudhury. You know that after serving 17 years in this department as well as in this university, now I can realize that a person like Professor Choudhury was not only a teacher of eminence or an administrator of excellence, rather he was a visionary. Just I'd like to mention a few points that at present you will see the agencies like the UGC, DST, DBT, all are emphasizing the need of the skill-based education for the rural community. And can you think that more than two decades ago, Professor Choudhury realized it and took the initiative to establish the Rural Technology Center of the university. Likewise, the Academic Staff College, now it has been named as the UGC Human Resource Development Center, or the Directorate of Distance Education, everywhere, behind all these creations, he was the mastermind. But do we have the ability to carry forward that legacy? We need to think. And you know that being entrusted now with the charge of the head of the department, 
during this pandemic situation, our duties and responsibilities have also been reoriented to meet the need of the new normal situation, starting from the admission to the exam, both UG and PG levels. The major responsibilities are conferred on the head of the department. Thus, I may be excused that I couldn't find enough time to contribute to this program. But as in this situation, the joint secretaries, other active members of the working committee have shouldered the entire responsibilities to make this event a successful one. My sincere thanks to all of them. And lastly, I think that through the, present, through the presentations of the, uh, our alumni in this webinar, that will provide a bird's eye view of the present status and the future prospects of the geology. And it would be helpful to the young researchers and the students who want to prosper as a future geologist. And lastly, I hope that all of you will enjoy this today's interaction. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. And I heartily congratulate all the members who are associated with this beautiful program. And also, I wish a grand success of this program. Thanks. Thanks to all. Uh, thank you, Kosik. Uh, now we are just uh, at the end of this inaugural uh, program. So may I request our Joint Secretary, Professor Abhijit Mujundar, to place a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Anupam. Uh, I am really uh, privileged and honored uh, to extend the vote of thanks uh, to such an august gathering. And uh, first of all, I am really uh, thankful to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nimai Chandra Saha, for his you know, words of wisdom and his vision towards the formation of the alumni and message to the students. Uh, we are also thankful to Professor A.K. Panigrahi, our Honorable Pro Head Chancellor, sir, for its words, kind words. And also, uh, I, we are really thankful to Professor Pavitra Kumar Chakravarti, our deep science, uh, for his, you know, the question that has been posed. Uh, how to resolve the pandemic situation and uh, think in a different way to solve it. Thank you, sir. And of course, uh, Dean Arts could not be present. Uh, the Easter, Dr. Devidas Mondol also remained, but we are really thankful for extended all sorts of administrative help and uh, uh, d d during organization this program. I will be filling in my duty if I don't uh, thank uh, Professor Kosi Ghosh, head of the department, as head uh, from the Alumni Association, though he is a member of Alumni. And he has rightly pointed out the uh, strong linkage and bondage and the umbilical cord uh, that should exist between the department and the Alumni Association as a whole and rightly pointed out regarding the outreach, importance of outreach program. On behalf of the Alumni Association, we are thankful to all faculty members. They have extended their hands, joined their hands in, uh, in organizing this. Uh, today, uh, we are really fortunate to have uh, two of our uh, teachers, Professor Subroto Roy and Professor Ranavi Prasad Dundi. And my, I also extend uh, all the vice presidents of the working committee, Professor Chandra, Professor Raylan Moldon, and uh, all other members so that the whole event could take shape. I think I would be failing in my duty if I uh, don't thank our all the honorable speakers and alumni, starting from Dr. 
Manoj Sarkar and our President, Dr. Asis Kumar Hajra. Uh, Professor Soibal Day will be speaking tomorrow. Uh, Professor Susanto Banerjee. And uh, we're host full of uh, very, you know, honored panelists. Uh, Professor Onupam Chatterjee, Dr. Sushidulal Ghosh, Dr. Sushita Banerjee, and Dr. Ovijit Day. So they were readily agreed. Uh, with a very short notice, uh, Anupam and both of us were, you know, in a uh, in a in a very active mode uh, trying to figure out this. And lastly, uh, the whole program has been hosted by uh, from Chargram Raj College and Dr. Devnaran Rai Principal. Uh, we readily agreed, and for that. On behalf of the alumni association, we are really thankful. And uh, lastly, I thank all the participants, student participants, and those as an alumni from different colleges, from other universities. And I find Professor Soilesh Chattopadhyay and many others, since uh, as a <coughs> Our Honorable Vice Chancellor said the list is endless. So if I miss out some of the names, uh, please uh, forgive me. So, and all those alumni, our honored alumni in food and in different organizations, in business organization, in other works of life, I thank them and for extending their hand and I wish that in future, they will actively participate and will be a guiding force for our preparedness into this uh, modern era. Lastly, I'd like to just quote a Vietnamese proverb, when eating fruit, remember the one who planted the tree. I thank you all again. Uh, thank you, Vajidda. Now we are just uh, end of this inaugural session. I must thank all of the dignitaries and stay continue to listen to our next part of the program, the scientific seminar session. So we are just uh, running behind the schedule. So without any time delaying, we are just yet to start the, our the, just start the program session. And over to Asif, who will be moderating uh, coordinating this scientific session. Over to Asif, please. Thank you, sir. Now, on behalf of uh, the uh, Working Committee Geological Alumni Association on oh. University, may I request Professor uh, A.P. Nondi, Vice President of JABU, to act as chairperson for the next um, scientific session and to be delivered by Dr. Asis Kumar Hajra. Sir, please. Good evening, everybody. Professor Nimai Chandra Shah. Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university and all other dignitaries attending the webinar. I cordially invite you in the scientific session of Professor D.K. Choudhury Memorial Seminar on Advances in Geological Science and its Prospects, organized by Geology Alumni Association of Baron University. I feel pleased to introduce Dr. A.K. Hajra, speaker of this session. Dr. A.K. Hajra is an eminent scientist in the country. And I also mentioned that he is, the, he is an alumnus of the first batch of the Department of Geology. It is our pleasure. He obtained PhD and DSC degree in geology from this University of Baron under the guidance of late Professor D.K. Chaudhary, the founder head of the Geology Department or on University and the father of soil geology in India. Actually, he introduced soil geology in India. Dr. Hajra served as additional director of Geological Survey of India under the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, Government of India. He, has, he was deputed by the Government of India as visiting scientists to the countries like Russia, 
न्यूजीलैंड यूएसए एटसेट्रा इन द डिफरेंट यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑन वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ जूलॉजी पर्टिकुलरली ऑन द एंटोमोलॉजी एंड सॉइल फॉर्म अंडर हिज एबल गाइडेंस सो फॉर 16 स्कॉलर्स हैव बीन अवार्डेड डॉक्टरल डिग्री from various universities of the country including baron university so far she has published more than 300 scientific papers in the national and international journals she is the author of 18 books on soil fauna published by the government of india dr hajra was the first scientist in the country who conducted researches on biological sciences in the frozen continent of antarctica and sub antarctic islands and discover some new invertebrates fauna he is the national core committee member on the antarctic and southern ocean affairs art science government of india at present he is a senior scientific consultant of national center for sustainable coastal management Kolkata and principal investigator coordinated project on capacity building in taxonomy ministry of environment forest and climate change government of india now dr hajra will deliver a lecture on the world beneath our feet now may i request dr hajra to deliver his lecture Dr. Hajra, please. Hello. Good evening. Thank you, Professor Nandini. Thank you very much for elaborately sharing about me. Thank you, first of all, to Professor. Sama, honorable vice chancellor, who is there forever, and all the dignitaries. He mostly to the world. who are joining this program today so i am welcoming them to join this beautiful evening you are spending with us a teacher of other of Closing in the country, Officer D K Choudhury, as you are. in imperial college of london that legacy was carried out of the soil geology in the country then i am out that same legacy of this you Closely, which is a vast subject, it will come. So, me. So, this is the legacy from 1952 to 1958, 1960, 
to 1969 onwards, it is carrying out. It is a beautiful legacy, I should say. Today, we are going to say in front of the school students of this particularly um, the over here listening on the tip uh, on the above ground it almost described and discovered in India in our country for example birds for example mammals for example reptiles for example most of the pieces for example in case of the insects mostly that is the butterflies polyptrons optoptrons all have been all are more or less described and discovered because the thing is that they are available easily. You can catch them and taxonomic study or ecological study can be conducted easily. This is the only reason our see a enormous world is present in the under the soil. So in this to this lecture, I will try to tell the students and the researchers to see the biodiversity of the enormous biodiversity of the soil which is present today and how much work has been conducted in the different universities of the national institutes. And so there is an enormous scope. Before you to do the ecological work, do the taxonomical work, and to do the genetic, it is, it is a somewhat tough. Means you cannot easily with a simple. In case of insects with a butterfly net, you are getting everything. So naturally, it takes some time to take out those fauna in the soil. It requires some skill for that. Most of the students are neglecting this poorly zone. But you can see, you're able to see how, how much diversity is over there and what is the scope behind this, you can easily understand from this presentation. So, first of all, I will say, At its simplest, it is the refers to the top layer of our planet Earth in which the plant grow. In two most famous manner, I mean our mother language is the word Sanskrit and in Latin, it appears mystical and solium, respectively. Mani soil ke amra, kibhabe use kori, na soil kaam ta ke ese ki Sanskrit se ke mystica, so naturally from these two words, we have Mitti in Hindi and Mati in Bengali. But one thing you should remember that from the French, we got Sol, S-O-L in French and Soil in English. Humor and the water and the air present on the surface of the earth. But in the Mahabharata, you think how we are misusing, misinterpreting the term soil. Student, I'm going to talk about it. Mahabharata is a soil that is used to be In Mahabharata, we are told the point Dujanam says. The tip of the needle at two soil of Tomaka Devona taken through the soil. I 
we can mention over here that in the case of the Ramakrishna, Paramahansa Dev, when says, Tata Mati, Mati Tata, this great Prabhu, right? Uh, uh, that is, the money is the soil, soil is the money. Now we can easily imagine 200 years before what he says, the Ramakrishna Paramahansa Deva, that soil is money, money is soil. At that time, <coughs> money was soil. Or now, soil is the main thing so beautifully it can be said. Another thing you can imagine, again, soil, we are misusing in that way. Dr. Namra Boli. In this way, we are often says, particularly the demand, when we are putting the demand, suppose one factory is opening in the Bardhaman, so immediately the people of the local people will come and say, well, now we are sold. Is this term in the form of claim, that is right. Soil can be used as the right also. So in this way, the soil has been <laughs> What is called, we have already told, it all comprises the thin layers of the earth. To attract the students and the researchers, they ask how this time is the soil has been formed and how the soil fauna have been grown and how they are there and from where we can start our researches in this background. So here simply see how the soil formula is equal to the factor of the That means soil of any property, and there are two active factors, functions of climate and organism, and the relief and parent material and time is the passive factors. Next slide, please. So from this, next slide. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, hello. Sir, when I have the camera, the sound of the sound of the sound. Sir, I'm going to go to if you please close your camera, that will be much better audible. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Carry on, please. Carry on. Am I audible? So here you can see that how weathering, how weathering, how the file starts. That's the simple formula. Wind is here. From the above of the mountains of the rock, and erosion takes place, and the, from the erosion, it is moving through the river, and it is coming to the mouth of the river, or somewhere else, it may be a desert or something like that, and that forms the soil and depositing. That is weathering, erosion, and the deposition is the main factor over here. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> ah. So it is a, how weathering, it takes a long, long year to form the soil. You can easily see that the, when the rock simply cracks with that rain or the temperature, it cracks easily. And it takes about 200 to 300 years to form this thing. Here you are seeing with the wind speed, that rocks have been eroded and uh, turned into a small particle. Next slide, please. 
Next. <clears throat> Next, please. Uh, now, you can see here, the through the wind erosion above. No. Hello. Hello. Before that. Before that. Before, yes. Here you can see, no, after this, after this, after this, yes. You can see due to the wind erosion, the, how the soil has been eroded in that way from the, and disintegrating the rocks in this way into the smaller particles. Here you can see the actinomycetes also take part in the formation of the soil. They are disintegrating the raw into the soil, into the smaller pieces. But it takes hundreds and hundreds of years to form. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next. Next. Yes. Here you can see that <clears throat> Above this, above this slide, above this slide, before, before, yes, here you are seeing the action uh, after this. Go ahead, go ahead. Tapos, next, yes, stay here, stay here. Here, you are seeing it forms the boulder. It forms the disintegrating part through the river. It is forming the boulder, and in the form of boulder, it is coming to the middle course of the river. And then the both side, you can see now the plants can grow. Under the plants, you can get a huge number of soil microfauna under this. Next, please. Next one. <clears throat> Next one. Next. In the <clears throat> next course, when the disintegration takes place, no, <clears throat> suppose please, suppose please go back, go back, go back, go back, yes, stay here, stay here, no, 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 sorry, <clears throat> next, next. Next, next, sorry, next, go for, yes, stop here. So after the disintegration, it transformed into the sand. And within the sand, well, under the river, you can see huge numbers of the different types of uh, insects or other animals. Here you are seeing under the soil of the river, you can see the orthopedal species that is Cytodactyla is living over here. Apparently, it is a barren land. It appears like that. But underneath this land, it, there are many other beautiful insects are also present over there. Next. Next, please. Next. <clears throat> Next, yes. Now, with these things, the soil particle size has been divided in that way that we call the boulders. Before this slide, please. If you are not uh, properly tapush before for soil particle size, please. Boulder above 200 millimeter, cobbles above 200 millimeters to 50 millimeter, pebbles. Gravel, very coarse sand, coarse sand, medium sand, fine sand, still dark, mud, and clay. Different sizes are formed, but these things are not happening in a day or two. It takes long, long years. Next, please. So, next. Go ahead. Next. Yeah. Now, when it comes to this, the siltation, the silt is formed. And in this way, the land mass is still is deposited in this way in the mouth of the river. And you can see the particle size now from the boulder, cable, gravels, and the sand. Now it is a silt. 
with this seal, with this whole of land, next slide please, land formation is takes place, we say here, with the dust particles. Here, the how the land is being formed. The pioneer vegetation which you are seeing after the formation of the plain land, of the deposition of the soil, underneath this, there is an enormous number of microsmodernisms which are active now in underneath the soil. This is the pioneer fauna we can say. Next, please. Now, next, please. After. In this way, the entire of our country have been divided and they form the soil, different types of soil. Here you can see in the above, on the, near the northern part, we are getting the forest and the mountainous. Then alluvial soil, you can say red and yellow soil, black cotton soil in the west of our country. Then laterite soil, you can see in the Deccan Plateau and the arid soil, you can see in the Rajasthan area. So in this way, the soil have been formed and it is distributed in our country and everywhere the vegetation is different, the fauna is different. So depending upon the soil, the specific type of soil, specific type of vegetation and specific types of fauna is available. By seeing a simple microorganism, we can tell, we can tell the what type of soil it is from where it has been collected. So this is the uh, beauty of the soil microorganism. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so next slide, please. Next one. Here, if there is no weathering, no transformation of the soil, what will happen? Before this one, before this soil. Ah, yes. Here you are seeing. No, please. Please, after this, after this, uh, yes, say, here you can see, my God, please, suppose, please go back, please go back, please go back, please go back, yes, stay here. This is the soil. You cannot find any uh, inch of soil over here because there is no weathering. This is the Antarctica. Antarctica, there is no weathering. That's why there is no vegetation. So there is no any other things over there because there is no crops, no vegetation, nothing is available in Antarctica because weathering has not taken place. It is a huge continent, just double of the Australia. So it is a barren like this because there is no soil formation has been taken place. Next, please. Next, next, next. <clears throat> now, next, uh, yes. In this way, this soil profile, you can, from the soil profile, you can, this last top six inches uh, or the six feet, you can tell that it is divided into different horizons. A horizon, B horizon, or C horizon. That is the main horizon which takes place and where the actual soil is found. The top soil is the maximum growth rate of everywhere. Next, please. So, if this is, next, please. Uh, this is the soil profile. You can see the top layer is the humus layer. And it is the O layer, we call it. This is the organic layer, where the maximum number of our vegetation and the organism and the animal will be available here. Then in the A is the subsurface soil. It is the rear soil. And after that, subsoil is present. And the bedrock is still over there, active. It is present. Next, after this soil formation, what happens? Next, please. Next. <clears throat> Next, suppose. So in a nutshell, what we have seen, that is sun, rain, temperature, the rock disintegrated, then it is formed the, with the help of the bacteria and actinomycetes, it is disintegrated and forms the topmost soil. And ultimately what we are seeing, at the end we are seeing that there is a humic layer and the climate forests have been formed. It takes about 300 to 1,000 years for getting 
a few inches of humic soil. So you can well imagine what costly it is and from where we are getting our crop and all the animals are saying about here is the ground. Next, please. Next slide, please. So, in, uh, yes, but stay here. That's so humus is, is, what is the function of the humus? What is the function? It improves the physical condition of the soil. It supports soil organisms. Maximum soil organisms will be available who are in the humus. And it increases permeability and addition. Addition and permeability increases the humus is maximum in a particular soil. It's, it acts as a stabilizer. It stabilizes the soil at the soil temperature. In the summer, it stabilizes the soil temperature for the soil microorganisms or the soil uh, vegetations also. It holds the soil moisture. Where there is a maximum number of the soil moisture repaidant, it holds the soil moisture during the It serves as a storehouse of the plant nutrients. So humus is the plant nutrients is maximum is available in the humic air. Next one, please. Next one. Now come to this living organism. Now you will be astonished to see how enormous number of living things are available in the soil. In the beginning, I have told you that beneath our food, what are the other world is present? We do not know. We, we have not studied. The bacteria condition you see per gram of soil, what is the present? Actinomycetes you see, protozoans you see per gram of soil present, algae you can see per gram of soil, mold how much over there in the soil, and the nematode on lakh 75,000 to 12 lakhs per gram of soil is present underneath the soil, and the molar 60,000 per acre. After support, so this is the condition beneath the uh, beneath our food, beneath our uh, another world, where there is an enormous number of organisms present. We are neglecting them. We have not studied as a zoologist. Next, <clears throat> next slide, please. <clears throat> next one, please. Here, the soil fauna. We by seeing that thing with the uh, Availability of those with what we will call microfauna is less than 20 millimeter is the microfauna, mesofauna or neofauna less than 20 millimeter to one centimeter and macrofauna is more than one centimeter then we call it a macrofauna. This is the same. Now next please. Now <clears throat> next please. Next slide please. Now you can see. The diversity of the below ground of the soil fauna. What the what are not available over there? There is the protozoan, annelids, isopods. There is a mice, polemol. What are not there? Either this is the biodiversity of the soil fauna underneath our earth in, and myrophores. What are not there? So next, please. <clears throat> next slide, please. Next one. <clears throat> next, please. Now you can see over there. Yes, this is the soil fauna. This, there is a large number of the grafts are present, the coleopterans larva, enormous amount. They are making fertility of the soil. And earthworm, you know what earthworm function is doing. If they are not there underneath the soil, the uh, fertility of the soil will decrease. In the left side, which is a Professor D.K. Chaudhary was the expert, and we are carrying the legacy. The Colombo, huge number of Colombos of the different colors are also present over there, which is increasing the fertility of the soil and decomposes the litters which are falling and converting into the soil. So these are not we have touched uh, properly in our zoology. Next, next slide, please. Next one. Next slide, Tapos. That was next slide. Yes. So above four factors, if you give the addition of organic matter, little cultivation, cereal crops like leguminous plants, if you grow, and the 
the inorganic fertilizer, if you use, then a large number of earthworms will be available. Whatever the, what will decrease the factor that decrease the population of the earthworm, the nitrogenous fertilizer which are using nowadays to get the maximum crop. That use of pesticide and insecticide, and then straw burning, straw burning by removing the straw from every year we are seeing in the Delhi side and the UP side, and over cultivation. These four factors are decreasing the population of the soil, uh, <coughs> I mean, earthworm. As a result, the soil fertility is also decreasing. Next one, please. <coughs> Next slide, please. Tapos. Next. So from this, I am not going into details with these things. If you are getting all these things, who will identify all these things? He will say, sir, who will identify we are collected this much of things? So naturally, you have to send all these things. We simply divide all these things. If you can, this might be a student. If there is no leg, put them separately. If there are three pairs of legs or two legs, you keep them separately. Then if there are four legs of the soil fauna, you keep it separately. If there are seven pairs of legs, you keep them separately and many pairs of legs, they are separately. And in the below, you can see these are the fauna available over there. You can send it directly by dividing this way to the Geological Survey of India. They will help to identify all these organisms. Because under the one loop, no work here in the country, I mean world, that under the one loop, huge number of scientists and geologists are sitting over there, starting from the mammals, the photos, so they can identify all these things. So naturally, you can do these things. Now, in, next slide, please. Suppose, next slide. <clears throat> so the importance of the soil is not to say, I will say simply, the many, Below you can see the many animals such as birds and the mammals feed on the soil fauna regularly. They are the food. They use as the food for the mammals and the birds. That is, they're helping for food as they different the other animals. And the soil fauna serves as a bulk diet of every reptile and amphibian during the part of the life of the year. Kono na kono samay, bachore kono na kono samay. Amphibians and reptiles depend on a soil fauna that is food is used for us. Next one, please. <clears throat> next, tapos, next. Now come here. Now soil is not in a proper condition. Soil pollution is enormous. You can see here the oil field. We are directly throwing the oil that is industrial discharge on the soil. As a result, what happens? The top soil is totally destroyed, and the, all the organisms and the microorganisms, they are also died. As a result, the un, we are getting unfertile soil over there. Next one, please. Suppose next slide. Yes, charge on the soil surface. If you go to the Durgapur site or any other industrial area, you will see there is no, they are not chemically treating all these, uh, I mean, hazards. They are directly throwing on the surface of the soil. As a result, what happens? Huge number of the microorganisms, all the soil fauna, which are present over there, millions and millions, they are destroyed easily. So this is the uh, thing which are destroying the soil. Now we come to this thing. Then what we have to do? The sustainable management of the soil microfauna, which we have to do, recycling of the waste, proper planning of the irrigation project. Regarding the irrigation project, I will mention over here, the uh, few decades ago, one Rajasthan canal, Rajasthan Nahar, which is known as the largest irrigation canal, has been set up from the river Satluj in the Punjab. And they are trying to irrigate the on the Rajasthan and the Haryana, including some parts of the Punjab. And what happened after a few years, due to the irregular, uh, I mean, planning, the 
salinity of the below the soil, it is raised above it. And as a result, entire area is not un suitable for the cultivation. And all the microarthropods and the microfauna have been dying. So, line number three, maximum use of organic manure. You have to remember this thing. Use non-persistent pesticides. You have to, that different types of pesticides are available. We know very well nowadays. So you have to, non-persistent pesticides. Restoration of the forest land. Please don't, our forestation should be there. Deforestation should be, should not be there. So we can restore the soil in this way. Use the waste treatment plan to reduce the emission of the toxic pollutants from the industry. You have to put the waste treatment plan. And the reclamation of the land of waste due to the mining of the extension, plantation of the planning of the local plant species. We have several times we have made many EIA, that is environment impact assessment in the Urisha, Kolapur area where the bauxite mining is going on. They are removing the in the miles after miles, the top soil they are removing. We have requested them after making that environmental impact assessment, they please put those plant species which were available on the top soil, not by putting some Krishnachura or Radhachura by bringing in from the nursery. You put those plant species which were available, they went to a open top mining, put those plant species deep aside and deep alive. Of the completion of your project to give the local plant Programs like eco development camps and create awareness of the local people, particularly the students, have to take the major role in this. And strict implementation of the environmental protection law which are existing in our country. So to save the soil, to save the soil uh, microorganism and the soil fauna, which we have already seen, we have to do all these things. Next one, please. Now, next. Now, fertile soil is equal to the high production of the crops and the happy farmer. You see, if the soil is fertile, if there is a large number of microarthropods and other soil uh, microfauna is present in the soil, you can get this type of production of the crop, and the farmers will be happy. They are happily enjoying their crop production. Fertility is the main thing of the soil. So at the end, we must say, our slogan should be, save soil to save our soul. This is the end of the part of this thing. Thank you very much for time. The next slide, please. Yes. Save soil to save our soul. And <clears throat> this is the end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for patience hearing. Thank you, Thank you, sir, for your nice lecture and very informative, very informative, many information about soil fauna and uh, the impact of pollution on the soil fauna. That you know, that we should um, take care of it, but the microorganisms of the fauna of the soil to be uh, restored. Thank you very much for your talk. Now, uh, I request them to um, place questions from the participants. For us. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, for the, we are already uh, 20 minutes uh, behind the schedule. So, uh, with the permission of the science and uh, budget person, so we are not able to put any uh, question to the speaker. So, if any questions are there, we are with chat box. The real person of the speaker, and then that can be answered. So, that's why we are uh, able to. Uh, end in the first seminar uh, session one and then skip to the next seminar session two and over to Asif. Now we are moving to the, uh, our second second talk. Thank you, Professor uh, AP Nondi, uh, for chairing the session. Now we are uh, moving to the second talk and uh, for this session, uh, Professor Ellen Mondal, Vice uh, will act as chairperson and the, the speaker for uh, this session is Dr. Mal. Sir, 
ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎలా మోడల్ సార్ ప్లీజ్ yes i mean i mean okay uh, good evening to you all the members who are present in this platform first of all i should pay my respect to the bhc professor saha pro bhc professor panigrahi and uh, uh, the dean faculty of science uh, professor chakraborty i am also seeing my teacher dr s roy is present my respect to him uh, particularly because of he is my teacher as well as he is the uh, research guide of me practically uh, as because i am the uh, vice president of job so it is uh, natural that i am the uh, student of geological soil i can take the term of uh, asis power i am the present of the geological soil and if i take the hod's word that we are the present for the past and it will be the future from the present for the current students practically at the time of our uh, research time sorry uh we there in the entomological laboratory similarly mahus was there who will be the speaker now in these conditions there's some echo there's some uh, excuse me sir there's some echo is going on somebody's microphone should be mute rather than the speaker there's some echo look sir please continue okay okay in abstract i can say that i had taken food from the geology soil it had been digested by all and they, we take we took a nutrition from our teachers and which had been assimilated in our mind and hearts particularly uh, our great teacher professor choudhury uh, professor roy and professor uh, p k choudhury at that time none can identified ourselves uh we the research scholars that who is the guide of uh, of a particular research guide so it was the environment at that time so thanks to uh, my respected teacher my respect to professor uh, uh, professor roy and uh, today's deliberation is uh, for manush sarkar manush sarkar got phd in chemical ecology and molecular insect biology insect science and he worked uh, uh, for isa uh, us best specialized agrochemical company in the capacity of head of the department and he led the product development function for new products and technologies of semiochemicals and managed the regulatory and analytical uh, bio efficiency cooperations Manus worked for Goodrich Consumer Private Limited Mumbai in different R&D capacities and developed technologies and products of heat, good night, and aero brand. He also worked into uh, with uh, into Genex Industries for a lot of time as general manager and was instrumental in evaluating and launching a novel biochemical pesticide across six countries. He worked in defense research and development laboratory. I think, uh, which is under the DRDO DRL Defense Research Laboratory, which was present in the Tejpur and the National Center for Disease Control, New Delhi, in different capacities, and performed researches in chemical ecology, insecticide chemistry, biodefense, uh, neurogenomics, and molecular science, into epidemiology and traditional aspects. Dr. Manos worked extensively in global collaboration project in the Bharatpur School of Tropical Medicine, UK, and Tanzania University of Glasgow, University of Delhi, Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, NCBA Street, MLSU, etc. He also uh, was an adjunct professor of Kew University. He has traveled more than 25 countries. Dr. Malos has more than 26 scientific publications, and he has served in editorial board of different scientific journals, 
members of national and international societies, associated and expert panel from time to time. Now, he is the global science, he is in global science platform of Rekit and Benkizer, RB in short, world's leading health and hygiene company. Today's deliberation mm -hmm. is from the Manus Sarkar. The title of the deliberation is Inside Industry, R&D Research and Development, How Digital R&D Transforming Innovations. So these are all about the uh, chronology of our Dr. Manus Sarkar, who happens to be the student of this uh, uh, geology soil and uh, that deliverations uh, for the Manus Sarkar inside industry RD and how digital RD and that's for the innovations over to Dr. Manus Sarkar. You're mute, Manos. You're mute. Manos, you're mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thanks, sir, uh, for your kind uh, words. Uh, and we are already late. I'll not take much um, uh, time. We'll uh, quickly jump. But before that, Amar Manos, Chamar Charjon, Eric Future, I can present that. Uh, SR, sir, in sir, GC, sir, and in sir. If I correctly, uh, are they in our focus? Let's say, Kina, sir, I'm not just like our. So uh, let me start. Uh, someone just confirm me if uh, my screen is visible or not. Uh, just me. I'm not very familiar with uh, me. I'm more familiar with the uh, teams. Yeah. Can I just confirm whether my screen is visible? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh. Thank you. Uh, and I hope I'm uh, clearly audible. Uh, someone is, uh, can you just mute uh, others? If I'm, I'm uh, hearing some sound. Thank you. OK. So so let me first uh, give you, an, uh, and, and I'm sure that I, I request uh, my uh, students and uh, other uh, uh, research fellows, uh, please uh, listen my talk. Uh, there is something for you also. All uh, do not leave. So it, at the end, you will get some message to take home. So I'll I'll divide the uh, presentation in uh, few 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 uh, segment. The first, who am I and where uh, where do I work? and uh, what my team does. So um, I, I take uh, privilege to say that. Uh, uh, digital revolution, what is digital revolution? Connected world with data-driven insight. And then digital R&D, why, what, and how we will do. Example of digital R&D in different domain, including entomology and life science, and the opportunities and threat uh, for students. So I uh, represent uh, Wicket Benkaiser. I don't know how much, how many uh, people you know the name. Uh, earlier it was Wicket Coleman, and now Wicket Benkaiser. It's a uh, uh, third largest after uh, PNG and uh, Unilever. It is the third largest uh, health and hygiene uh, company in the world, and uh, we have around forty thousand employees, and we have a two hundred year of. Uh, history and uh, we are operating in uh, right now more than 200 countries uh, so this is a brief about our uh, company we have 60 countries in this continent and uh, around we have nine center of excellence in in r d and we have 16 research hub so we have two type of research one is re hub re hub R&D hub and is center of excellence. So one of the center of excellence present in Gurgaon, which works for pest and pesticide categories globally, which we have. And I represent that. So probably our brands are very famous to people rather than the name. So if you know uh, Martin, Lysol, Stoll, Wheat, RP, Durex, Dettol, uh, you know, yeah, period, period, finish, everything. I mean, Nurofen, uh, Stressil, 
Uh, we have a good presence in OTC platform. So these are our vanish. These are all our brand you, you, you must be using every day in your house. Uh, and uh, our global R&D center, as I told you, so these are the uh, areas where we have a center of excellence. And uh, in, in, in Gurgaon, here in Gurgaon, if you see, this is uh, where I, I, I sit. So what my team does in, in, uh, in Gurgaon? So I have a team uh, present in Gurgaon, Brazil and Australia. So uh, we have a hub R&D in Australia and Brazil. So my team also there in Brazil and Australia. So we do research on new synthetic active ingredients. We do research on a new herbal active ingredients. We do research on a new product development, new format development, disruptive format development. And then uh, we do research on entomological science and technology. We have a fantastic state-of-the-art entomological facility. And uh, we do different research collaboration globally and in India and uh, abroad. And we do digital R&D. We have started digital R&D. I would like to talk about this digital R&D, which is a very new, I mean, I will not say very new, but relatively new concept uh, to the world. So what is digital R&D? So we are actually looking towards the future of R&D 10 years ahead. So before I start digital R&D, let us see how different industrial revolution happened. So if you see, uh, industrial, the first revolution, which is called industry 1.0 uh, and 2.0, which is basically a you know, machine replacing you know, danger and heavy work which happened in 19th century, early 19th century, started in early 19th century, and then uh, completed. Then it start in 20th century, which is industry 3.0. It's an IT revolution. We know that uh, so IT is a uh, take up, you know, huge, you know, um, uh, it shift, paradigm shift, entire paradigm shift, IT revolution. So where machines replacing the repetitive and tedious work. Now we are in the industry 4.0, where we are talking about the machine replacing the knowledge work. So that is called the digital revolution. So we, if you see the digital revolution, two types. Uh, one is incremental innovation. So we call innovation two type, different type of innovations are there. One is incremental innovation. One is radical uh, innovation or disruptive innovation. So if you see uh, Gmail is an incremental evolution, uh, uh, innovation, uh, which you know uh, Google was there and then uh, email uh, came and uh, Gmail came and all these things, it's an incremental. Uber, on the other hand, Netflix, on the other hand, other game changer evolution in the, uh, I mean, uh, the innovation in the, uh, in the industry, which, which entirely changed how uh, the travel, Uber entirely changed how it, the travel uh, looks like. Now, now, after Uber, there are the n number of companies does that. So, so, but it started with Uber. So, <laughs> exponentially, technology is uh, technology and advancement. If you see, I'm not going to the detail, but uh, we are uh, today using technologies, or we are developing uh, different technologies, which all technologies is become connected now. If you see, everything is connected. We all are connected. I know. I, I mean, you are sure that I'm sure that uh, you guys are, you know, um, uh, traveling and uh, your Google, uh, you know, um, capturing where you have spent how much of time. Probably you all are using different, um, uh, you know, um, uh, digital watch and the smart watch and you know Fitbit and all these things. So your doctor even can understand what you are doing. Your parents, your I mean, uh, the, the the parents of the student, uh, kids can understand. Uh, if they have any digital variables, the, what they are doing. So we, everything is connected. If you see today in the Facebook, uh, 4 million posts every minute, 1.7 million photo per minute being liked in Instagram, Tinder, Twitter, you know, Snapchat, there are n number of things that uh, people are doing and everything is connected. So what this is giving? This is giving the data. So any industry or any organization, any research organization, whether basic research, fundamental or applied or whatever, 
they need data. There are two types of data. One is internal data, one is external data. And this internal and external data can also be you know, divided in structured and unstructured data. But whatever, this data actually giving you the insight. That is the main fundamental. What insight? I will come to that later on. So if you see from data how to get an insight, there's a data, then uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, like mathematics, statistics, data management, analytics, machine learning, automation, artificial intelligence. You are putting into the data and then you are developing some model. That model will give you different answers to the questions. What happened? So from the data, you can predict what happened in past. Why did it happen? Why it happened in the past like what it happened? That is the data. If you do the analysis, you will get it. What will happen in the future? That is the prediction. Predict it. If you can predict the future, you can change the future. I know that you guys know that there's a movie dialogue in Krish 2013, I think. So what is currently, world is looking towards that. What will happen? When you, when you know that what will happen, what do you want to happen? So you know you, what you want to happen in future. So you can change the, the future or you can try to change the future. That is why is the holy grail towards what is going towards. This is all clubbed together. This is the digital era and digital R&D. And R&D is the uh, main center of any this type of development. So any digitization will start from R&D. So the data is the center of digital, uh, digital world, digital R&D. And there's an uh, artificial intelligence. A part of that is a machine learning, mathematical modeling, statistics, coding, blah, 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 blah. Now, digital R&D takes lean and agile even further. I don't know how much you, you all are aware of uh, lean R&D and agile R&D. So there's a different type of R&D. One is traditional R&D, which is basically a waterfall coming from top to down. So, uh, so my teacher told me to do that, so I'm doing that. My boss told me to do that, I'm doing that. So that's called top-down approach. It's a waterfall. That's a traditional way of R&D. But now different industries and different organizations, even non-industrial organizations, move towards uh, lean and agile R&D. What is lean R&D? This is basically a product development philosophy that revolves around cutting an unnecessary work or effort until you are sure that you need to do it. So there are different uh, philosophy, uh, different principles. I'm not going to that. Then agile R&D has taken lean R&D further to the next level. Um, connecting with consumers and IT along way. Now this is the digital R&D, which is taking the traditional R&D, I mean, uh, the agile and lean R&D to the further level. So this is very important to be a part of this journey and uh, earlier than later. It's a hundred billion opportunity, digital R&D, broadly defined, Digital is an application of genomics, nanotechnology, sensors, the Internet of Things, IoTs, uh, big data, advanced analyticals, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, 3D printing, etc. All these technologies to radically reshape the organization, industry, and indeed a broader society. That is what digital R&D is all about. Whatever we are doing, I'll come to that. Even our taxonomy is now digitized, being digitized. I'll, I'll come to that uh, slowly. So creating extreme winners and losers uh, uh, by industry through this digital R&D. It started in, uh, before I, only, I just quickly, I would like to mention that. Uh, it started um, seven, eight years or 10 years back, but it took actually a set around 2013-14. Uh, so we started, uh, different big companies started digital R&D as a separate function uh, inside the R&D. So that is now uh, getting, and my team is responsible for digital R&D. One of the, uh, so I'm, I'm working, I mean, uh, my, my team, I have a team of digital R&D people who is working towards that. 
So digital R&D changing the way we do research, manage the data and interact with other functions. How? I don't know uh, if it is very much used in uh, um, academia, but in industry, it is very much, very important to have different functions aligned. Means, uh, function means R&D is a function, marketing is a function, sales is a function, uh, supply chain is a function, production, manufacturing is a function, and everything is connected. So when I develop a product, I need to uh, develop it, develop, and then we have to validate it along with the marketing team that whether this is right for whom we have developed. Then once it, everything is done, then we have to transfer the technology to manufacturing for the production. And manufacturing production, the raw material supply will be, um, I mean, supported by the supply chain. So there's a there's a there's a network thing. So earlier it was all you know manual, and a lot of companies still it is manual. But uh, many big company MNCs uh, like uh, Rocket and other MNCs are now transforming this, and uh, it actually first started by the pharma industry. Now the other industries are also taking it. Um, different. LIMS, that is Laboratory Information Management System, ELNB, that is Electronic Lab Notebook, Enterprise Resource ERP, that's a supply chain. So, and this all, you know, systems, these all are software systems, they are connected to each other. And your data, whatever the data you are generating, is actually transferring from one to other uh, system. They can, the systems can talk to each other systems as per your wish. And the most important thing is that once the digital uh, R&D and links and everything, now we are developing, our uh, Italy center has been developed uh, to the further level. So we are, uh, we implemented that all machines are roboting and direct uh, data will come to there. So nobody can manipulate anything. Currently we are seeing that a lot of, you know, um, uh, and, I mean, fraud is happening in publications. I mean, it was there. Uh, so, uh, but this in industry, we cannot even manipulate third digit, third decimal point even in some times, because it is very critical for us. We we should not manipulate anything. So that's why these systems are in place, which will uh, ensure that uh, any manipulation is not happening. <laughs> So digital R&D reshaping the health sector R&D. How digital R&D is, so I'm talking about uh, the, the health sector who has first uh, you know, adopted this digital R&D. They're predicting models of biological process and drugs using more diverse uh, set of molecular and clinical data. They're identifying molecules with the highest probability of success. So they're predicting it. So if they have a library of I went, I have visited um, Bayer, I don't know whether you know, Bayer uh, is a big company. Uh, I visited their uh, library in uh, German, Germany, uh, Dusseldorf. So uh, they have a robotic system and they have, I think, uh, seven lakh uh, molecules there. And they have all the vials over there. So it is impossible to screen uh, all the molecules and get a drug uh, out of that or, or whatever active out of that. That's why you need some, your historical data to talk on that and you have to develop certain models which will give you maximum five, because it's a huge cost. So maximum five molecules to test or three molecules to test. So that is the, what uh, pharma industries are doing. Patients are, you know, matching uh, to clinical trials using diverse data sets for, you know, enrolling patient with, uh, you know, genetic information rather than, you know, just uh, our serendipity. Whereas, I mean, the, the visiting the doctors or you know smaller sort of uh, less expensive trials you know generated better insights so these are the things that uh, digital r d is helping free data flow from different function as i told you uh, that is digital r d is reset now on to the digital r d in entomology paste and uh, you know life science my team is also doing a lot of activities what i'm saying here uh, but uh, Due to confidentiality, I may not be able to disclose a lot of things, but yes, I'll give you um, a lot of uh, good uh, you know, insight on that. So automated the insect mass rearing and farming. 
So we have automated the insect rearing, and uh, they, I mean, uh, they're, they're not uh, we on. Uh, there are there are different companies who are actually pioneering that. Uh, I'll come to that later on. Identification and taxonomy is being automated. Sex prediction and separation uh, sorting, because uh, we're predicting of predicting um, the sex from the um, uh, you know the the the, the eggs. Uh, from the next generation is very important, especially when you are releasing uh, Ulbeckia mosquitoes or all these type of uh, you know um, genetically modified, uh, genetically engineered stuff. Uh, sorting, sex sorting is also done uh, through automation. Larval and pupil count, insect feeding, and everything is now how much insect you know, need to feed and everything, changing their trays and everything is automated. And uh, it is digital. It is not only the difference between automated and digital is that uh, automated is automatic and di uh, digital R&D is autonomous. You no need to have a presence of human because your through artificial intelligence, through the ongoing data, your system is learning to how to do. Like how my uh, kid, my child learn how to walk, how to talk, how to all these things. They're learning as they're progressing. So you don't have to, automatic is that whatever you say, uh, make up, you know, set, that, that set will run only. Here is not that. Here they are learning as the process good and they are modifying their systems accordingly. That's the difference. Now the new molecule di uh, discovery, high throughput screening is happening through um, automation different predictive model uh, uh, digitally, and then uh, predictive efficacy uh, is being, you know, um, uh, is predicted before lab and field, because as I told you, that any of these lab trials, I did lab trials and uh, field trial a lot in my life. So these are very um, uh, tiring, uh, resource consumed, and, you know, costly affair. So if we can predict it, what the efficacy will be? And these sometimes predictions are, almost 90% accurate. And you can screen down the, your um, molecules, and then you can do a final uh, validation in the field or in the lab or field. That's how uh, the uh, digital prediction models are behaving nowadays. Use historical data to predict the future. That is what we call it. Predict stability of the formulation. Uh, minimizing the time to market and the cost. Now, live consumer input also you can get through that. Now the disease and the pest infestation prediction, biomonitoring, disease prediction, sensor-based smart trap and detection. I'll come uh, to this thing. And sensor-based different technologies are there. So I don't know how much you are aware of Verily. Verily is a Google company, Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Uh, they have created Verily. It's a technology company, and uh, they have Verily's life science as a division where they are uh, doing a debug uh, debug project and uh, we uh, i uh, we have an association with them so um, i have visited their lab and uh, some of my uh, scientists are working with them uh, in some aspect so verily um, life science uh, they are uh, working on ulbeckia mosquitoes and you know uh, infecting the ulbeckia male ulbeckia mosquitoes and releasing them and they have a factory so like Oxitec earlier, uh, I mean, still they have a factory. So like similarly, uh, Verily is also, they have a factory, which is totally digitally uh, enabled. So even two o'clock at night, if something happened, there will be a uh, you know alarm to the respective person at home. And machines are so beautifully trained that they can handle the situation as well. That is what the digital R&D and the automation, uh, artificial intelligence, all about. Microsoft premonition. This is one of the probably I call it skip generation technology. How much uh, if you all are following Microsoft premonition, where predicting ep uh, epidemics like the weather, how Microsoft premonitions can help in the global, you know, fight against a disease outbreak. So Microsoft Premonition is really a skip generation technology. I will take quickly to you on video, uh, maybe two minutes. Uh, it's, a, it's a seven, eight minute video, I'll, but I'll uh, run for two minutes. Can you just confirm whether it's the, uh, audible or not, the sound? 
no 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 did you found is not audible no no audible not audible okay please continue So I'll not go to the detail. Uh, you can you can check this video uh, in the uh, on, online as well. Uh, so the the thing is that they developed uh, Microsoft Premonition, uh, the technology they developed a smart trap, which not only trap mosquitoes, they trap mosquitoes, they analyze mosquitoes, they collect data, they disperse, they store data, they disperse data as uh, without doing anything, uh, any any human intervention in that. All genomic data, whether those mosquitoes are infected, what is the resistance status in the mosquitoes, and I, I uh, discussed a couple of times with Ethan, um, so uh, I, I have a bit idea on this technology. So um, they have, uh, they make it really to the, to the next to next level. I mean, I call it skip level. So this is this is something which is incredible, and uh, and and that may this may change the world in next to five years. Uh, okay. So uh, there's another um, company uh, we, uh, that is uh, Corosat, uh, the uh, robot, uh, Robotnik. Um, they they develop a, uh, one one technology which is called uh, Corosat. So we know that the, there will be the 75 percent growth or demand of meat by 2050, and insect farming might present a potential you know sustainable solution to this issue. Now insect are rich in protein, we all know. And uh, you know it is edible, and Coroset actually technically 
you know their solution based on the industrial 4.0 architecture they call it uh, icps uh, support that's a, that's a digital uh, sort of thing um, so their, their entire insect life cycle from uh, from from uh, from egg laying to entire things will be you know robotic and you know automation and autonomous system digital so they replace the task like you know crate transform handling environmental condition monitoring larval detection separation but nothing is required i mean that is, everything is i mean by uh, doing by uh, artificial intelligence so these are the some these are the certain other examples we are associated with some of these um, innovations uh, one is track it now and they have a tra trap um, even in india they did a lot of trials in hyderabad and, and other areas and um, that's a uk based company so they they trap the mosquitoes and the detection they they're basically a surveillance tool so you don't have to identify collect all these things we used to do uh, 15 years back and go to the field and collect the data more early morning you know identify so nothing no, no doing that uh, the the computer and system will do that with 95 percent accuracy and uh, you can randomly check it for cross checking and uh, there's a there's a virtual reality uh, ncbs has developed this we are working with them also on that so they are uh, in a virtual world they are basically uh, seeing what uh, insect is seeing so this is basically they are mapping their brain and how they are uh, responding to different stimulus different odor different visual cues um, uh, the insects are uh, doing and, and this is developed by hmm, dr simon's team uh, in ncbs uh, uh, there's another is laser uh, insect monitoring, which is developed by uh, laser guided missile. The person who is who, de who was developed laser guided missile in 1970s and 80s. Uh, the same then same per person was the mentor of this project, and they developed a photonic sentry. You can detect the uh, insect in a 30 uh, uh, meter area. And uh, you can you can kill them precisely if it is mosquito, precisely if it is fly, whatever you put in the system, they will not kill the other insect. So this this system is being developed. It is now a bit costly, but definitely ten years, five years, ten years down the line, it would be more cheaper to have. Spotter is one of another uh, new technologies where they are you know um, uh, for home, for forestry, for agriculture, they are developing trap that gives uh, you know automation automatically monitor and give you the informations about the uh, different pest attack or different you know um, uh, the conditions uh, in that so uh, take home message what is the take home message for digital r d so digital r d when basically a model become a product now digital r d is an obvious future so you cannot avoid it so any and all research can be taken to the next level using digital R&D Institute. You, you tell me, I can tell you how to do it. So um, industry is at crossroad, the rise of digital R&D in all nation. Sooner is better for all scientific community to start realizing this truth. Uh, you need to be ahead of time to be relevant in the competition. So these are the take home message and uh, thank you. Yes, I'm done. Yes. Uh, uh, Asim is there? So the, I think there are some students might be some question to be the interesting topics that Mouse is talking about, the digital R and D, all these things. So if uh, our uh, chairperson could permit, so student can ask some question to him. Um, that depends. So there's some questions. Yes, yes. I was Yes, yes, I was going to say this seminar is for the bridging of the uh, present students to the past. So Manus is here. Uh, so uh, you are uh, having every liberty to give the uh, present students to have some questions from our expert. Yes, you, my dear brothers and sisters, present students. So uh... one by one. Students, you can just, uh, any audience can you know, type in the question in your chat box, so you can take the question and work to the manos then. Uh, so if you, if you can open your microphone, that can jam our 
audience or your system. So if the uh, question comes for the students or any audience, so Manos, I have question to you. So you have shown on a slide that you have shown that digital technology can be using for the insect trapping or insect taxonomical things like that. I do I do understanding the fact is that that might be AI, artificial intelligence or machine learning might be. But my question is that, so if for any machine learning or AI, you have some experimental or data to be input and then given up different of your modeling system develop and based on that again you have the your unknown model unknown system again you have the data find getting from the either digital driven or the experimental driven so how do you explain that so that is what fact might means if a prepare on an ai program might be fact but if you know some insight it should be taxonomically or anything i identified that again you need some biological experiment data then you can fit. So without biological data, how you have the digital data? That my question to you. Yeah, very good question, very relevant question and obvious question. So um, you need a data, definitely. You need a data. Uh, Papas, can you just uh, stop sharing? It is very disturbing. I am seeing my big face. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for data, you need the data. For any digitization, any digital identity, you need the historical data. And then based on the data, you develop automation, uh, I mean, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and different uh, algorithms, different models, and etc. You are absolutely right. But the thing is that when you are getting a new scenario, that is the beauty of automatic and automation is that, uh, I mean, uh, the, the um, uh, automatic and, and uh, autonomous is that, your data set, your, your model is able to automatically learn the new system as you put uh, the new data. So anything which you are predicting, so you need a data, as I told you, without data, you cannot do anything. So you need a historical data, develop a model, that model is good for another several years. You no need to keep more data set unless there is a new data set which you feel to add in the system. Let me let me give an example. Uh, you can develop a predictive model, mercury infestation predictive model, or any paste infestation predictive model, right? So there are two types of one is only uh, statistical model or the mathematical model, only mathematical or statistical model, which is based on the truth of that particular data. Okay, so on that particular scenario or particular area. If you are doing a mathematical model uh, based on several data sets. Uh, a huge data set of socioeconomic condition, weather, um, disease uh, data, mosquito infestation data, historical data. I'm talking about his data, historical data over the time. And if you code it and do it through automation, machine learning, neural network, and all, your model is not only true for that particular data. It is true for any data, any situation, any country. If you are developing for India, it is true for Brazil as well. So it is an autonomous system. It learns of its own. It is not that you have to put data every time. Am I, am I clear? Uh, yes, yes. So now question comes from our uh, audience. So there is a Suddha Sattva Maitra as a question. Uh, his question is that uh, how the identification of the insect in trap is based on any landmark analysis algorithm? So uh, that trap is, um, you know, any how we do identify in 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 normal situation in traditional way through different identification keys, right? So that machine is already trained through those keys and through real time uh, scenarios to identify the insect. So if I am developing one uh, thing, I will uh, for muscular identification, I will take the different identification key. I will take mosquitoes data or uh, different identification and train the model to identify. So this mosquito is this, this is what you have uh, tarsal segment, I think So once you complete that, then you train the model. Now anything which is coming, the model uh, that um, the sensor can detect, you know, this is based on with different sensors, either uh, wing bit uh, frequency or uh, camera, which will take 
the pictures, different three dimensional pictures, and you give the accurate and the accurate. Uh, it would be 95 percent accuracy is recorded. 80, 80 to 95 percent accuracy, depending on different system. So yeah, so that is how it does. With the same things, the same type of question asked by our uh, student, the uh, Sucharita, in the same way, how the Microsoft Emotion can track the PC type of mosquito? Mm, sorry, I, I didn't get it. What is that? With the same type of question asked by our one of the students, uh, student, Sujurita, that how the Microsoft Premonition can track the specific type of mosquito. So Microsoft Premonition technology, they have uh, uh, attractants, uh, certain attractants is a combination of attractants so that they can trap the mosquitoes uh, in that. Uh, once the mosquito is inside, they can analyze the mosquito. They can first, they will identify whether there are different compartments inside. They will identify the mosquito first. So they will identify whether those, that mosquito has a, any, they have different uh, technologies, high tropic technologies, um, uh, uh, that uh, infrared and all these technologies. Uh, I even don't know what are those technologies they have. So they are not telling those, uh, some of them even trade secrets. So they can identify whether that mosquito is infested with any, um, uh, any, any, any virus or bacteria or pathogen or not. And then they will, uh, if it is required, these mosquitoes can be identified for uh, their um, susceptible status also. I mean, they are, they are doing a fantastic job. Uh, we are at, at now, at this present, we are, um, uh, they are not clearly telling what are the technologies they are uh, using inside. But uh, yes, um, they, they have something which is generation. And Microsoft, you know that they don't do anything which is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, really amazing. So, not even understand what they are doing basically. What I understand from your delivery, sir. Okay, Professor Onupam uh, Basu. I think uh, our teacher, yes, uh, yeah. Professor Rai, is active to say something or to ask something uh, uh, to the uh, speaker, sir. Sir, please, sir, sir please. Sir, I'm mute, sir. Sound mutation, sir. Sound mutation. Mute, mute. Sir, unmute. Ko sir, microphone taki sir to on press kro on kori light taki sir press kro din microphone light taki. Ah, bhuzo achhe. Eba shunte bachhe. Ha, pas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Acha, amarata query achhe jar. Question na. Eje Microsoft premonition pa thei bolle. It is a low-cost outbreak predict for the body. Happen. Happen. If the aim only for disease, uh, at this moment, what they have developed is for mosquito and mosquito-borne disease, but they are developing it for uh, agriculture as well. Agriculture and other as well. Yes. And some technology. It's a hard wave of, hard wave of COVID, as I told you. Hmm. Yeah, the prediction. Uh, Microsoft uh, innovation and website is Jan. Or the premonition actor take on innovation. Yeah, then we uh, or the virus detection or prediction or actor they are working on that. So they have done Microsoft innovation uh, website. Again, you can or the access of. So uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, access sir. Or a report. Yeah, like access. Man, a course they are working on. That. Very interesting. Yes, sir. Fine, uh, I mean, that is. Can you tell me project director? And uh, I mean, that's fantastic. So good. I mean, we would like to be associated with them even as an organization. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, till now we are not associated. Uh, it's really in interesting. And then Onupam, any questions from the students? Sir? Sure, there's a question from the uh, some question from the uh, Sumana then uh, Sukriti. So these are the question definitely on behalf of uh, alumni association and Manos. Definitely Manos and alumni association with, with us. Manos is affiliation, everything with us. So anytime you can, we are all alumni, alumni, and definitely contact with you for any uh, help. Okay, so on behalf of Manos and alumni, I can give you Okay. Now the question some artificial communication. Do you please elaborate how the autonomous system you have just discussed is able to decrease the error of model when the, when the data sets are changing continuously? That's a part of the system, anyway. Uh, if I correctly understood how it is changing continuously. Yes, yes, yes. So this is called uh, the uh, machine. And if I 
so there are different type of so art, artificial intelligence has a different um, so one is you know model, data model advanced model advanced model model ah huh, yeah so that is artificial intelligence is one of the big umbrella where we develop different uh, sort of uh, model in that model we do it uh, machine learning so different machine learning have different like neuronal network different uh, type of machine learning algorithms are there so when you in the algorithm so we make the algorithms like that i am not an expert so i don't make my team does it i only understand what they told me so that need to be very clear first so i am not an expert in machine learning so i i am i am on the expert of how to handle that machine learning team that is all so so uh, they develop uh, the machine learning and it is uh, such a way to do the different coding and all that so that model can adapt with the situation with the with the new new data new data can there is something you have you, if you interpret the new data is not accurate if you see the any prediction given with the new data is not accurate you train the model retrain the model with the new data set that model is again retrain means আমি কিছু নতুন কাজ করছি আমি কিছু নতুন কাজ করছি ওন ট্রেনিং দ্য ডেটা ট্রেন ট্রেনিং দ্য ডেটা व्हाट আই ডু यस यू हैव टू ट्रेन द डेटा इफ इट इज नॉट मैचिंग योर व्हाट यू वांट देन यू हैव टू ट्रेन द डेटा अगेन विद द न्यू डेटा सेट लाइक আমি একটা জিনিস আপনাকে কিছু একটা জিনিস শেখানো হয়েছে যে আর সাম সিম্পল জিনিস বলছি আমি ডিএনএ আইসোলেশন কি করে করে ঠিক আছে একবার তো শিখিয়ে দিয়েছি যে ডিএনএ আইসোলেশন করছি করছি যখন করতে পারলাম না আটকে গেলাম তখন আমাকে কেউ একজন না 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 তুমি এটা ঠিক করবে এটাকে রিট্রেন করে দিলো দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াট Yes. So this is how it works. So simply I can add one thing to Rama, so that a question. So for any model, there is a, once it's a trained data set, and the external data set. Uh, so first of all, they're trained, so as a trained data set, you have to model, this is the model, and they apply the data for your application. That's a major uh, thing of the AI, whatever I do understand basically. Okay. Yes, you need to have data or any data. The most important thing is that Uh, any present data uh, you can collect different data and you can, you can you can develop a model or you can develop a um, uh, software any model will uh, be ultimately developed into a software which is called uh, user interface ui so the important thing is that aage jeta amra korte partam na dhorun apni eta kaj korchen ekta dhorun ami ekta example dichi tribal genome er upor genome genetics er upor jeta amra kaj korchen tribal loker er upor তো আগে যে ইনফরমেশন গুলো আপনি নিতে পারতেন না মডেল মানে ইয়েতে আপনার আপনার কনক্লুশনে আজ সেই ইনফরমেশন গুলো আপনি ট্রাইবাল হ্যাবিটেট ট্রাইবাল ফুড ট্রাইবাল অল দিস থিংস ইউ ক্যান টেক দিস ইনফরমেশন এন্ড মেক এন অটোনমাস নট অনলি মডেল ইউ ক্যান মেক डिफरेंट ইউ নো প্রেডিকশন সিস্টেম डिफरेंट ইউ নো অ্যালগরিদমস এন্ড দে গিভ ইউ ইনফরমেশন যেটা আপনি তো আপনার পেতাম না সেই ভাবে সেই ডেটা গুলোকে আমরা ইনকর্পোরেট করতে পারতাম না উইথ মেবি জেনেটিক মেকআপ যদি আপনি দেখতে চান কি করে আলাদা তাদের इवन নাও দিস ট্রাইবালস আর অলসো ইউ নো বিকাম সোশ্যাল সো হাউ देयर সোশ্যাল বিহেভিয়ার ইজ মেকিং আ ডিফারেন্স প্রবাবলি ইন देयर জেনেটিক্স অ্যাজ ওয়েল সো দিস ইনফরমেশনস আর ভেরি নাও ইউ ক্যান ইউ ক্যান ইনকর্পোরেট উইথ ডিজিটাল আর এন্ড ইন গেট আ গুড দিস क्वेश्चन <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ami, uh, I, I'm don't, uh, I don't know exactly if Microsoft Prevention they have any um, process of differentiating the cryptic species or different sibling species. I'm not aware of. Uh, but yes, species level identification de- uh, definitely can be done. Uh, may not be the um, cryptic or sibling species. But I can check with Ethan next time when we meet. Uh, I'll keep this question in my diary. So basically, depends on how much data you are generating for differences in the data, basically. Yeah. yeah. How many data is available? Is it? Based on all the input. 
Yeah, and most importantly, any organizations like uh, the people are uh, doing uh, research for ages, and they have terabytes of data, different data. They are these data will be in some raw format in some uh, lab notebook or in some publications. Nobody remember that. But those data can be used to, uh, I mean, uh, get different something for the future. So any 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 of our uh, so I mean the. I mean, uh, last 50 years, so many research may be done um, uh, in, in Bardhaman University. That could be terabytes of data, even gigabytes, terabytes, uh, I mean, some other bytes, I don't know, of data. So that data also can be used uh, to uh, for different prediction models, different system generation. Uh, and these are very uh, 80 to 95 percent confidence interval. These are all uh, autonomous systems and these, uh, you know, machine learning. Systems. Sure. I hope we have lots of questions and that with the bonus. Sir, over to, so if any uh, question, uh, uh, is there around or Vita is there? So on behalf of the organizing committee and uh, Jabu, I thanks Manos and all of you, sir, uh, Professor Roy, sir, Roki, sir, our vices are still with us, sir. Very nice of you. We are still your managing your time to be with us today. So just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute, don't want, sir. Uh, Dr. Swat, yes, sir, sir. Uh, our university uh, uh, recently being associated with the uh, uh, sister project of Bill Gates, the Prodivi. They are working on the yellow stain borer. And uh, that is completely on the basis sure. of their uh, yellow stain borer control on the paddy field. Yes. So uh, uh, it was uh, our idea, uh, central paradigm was integrated pest management, wow, but this time through the process of the simulation or any other process, the insect are being controlled. In case of stem the uh, uh, hormone, uh, that means the pheromones are being detected, projected, and mm -hmm. uh, internalized that are being assessed in the field. What you told earlier that uh, the collecting the insects, they are producing so many data. Maybe of that, the uh, main theme of the data, that is the pheromone science that had been created in mm -hmm. other countries also, but they are now coming to our agricultural field to control the uh, yellow stain border uh, by uh, trapping the uh, insects, the male insects, uh, uh, placing the trap in latitudinal and longitudinal distance after collecting these insects that are being identified, maybe of another type of insects. So it is your uh, uh, ideas, confirmations of the Prodivi also that they are going to uh, project this as a pest control through the hormonal control test. Uh, hormonal control, uh, that is the point. And uh, particularly that is of uh, Skirpofega nivella, I think in West Bengal, yellow stain bearer uh, uh, affects so many paddy fields. Yeah. Then, then another one is Nilo Parvata loosens, uh, which is confined to the uh, Bakuda district or any other areas. So this is all about the um, confirmations of your project regarding the Microsoft or whatever it may be. So it created a good and enough uh, interest to our students as because so many questions are coming from the student side and particularly our professor, uh, Professor Rai was interested to have a question so to uh, wanted to wanted to know from you. Uh, you are the best. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, we yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. I am. I am ending myself. So, okay. After that, one of them will say yes, uh, Doctor Sarkar. Yeah. 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 I am aware of ProBB. Um, I actually worked in my previous capacity as a head of uh, product development in ISTA. I worked with ProBB. Uh, I worked with Peter, he is their uh, technology, chief technology officer. Um, so they, uh, they they use actually our pheromone. So there's a, anyway, different thing. So, um, so I know that they're uh, doing some work with uh, in, in field in India. 
and uh, yes uh, they have a uh, they have a, a software which can actually identify predict identify uh, this yellow PSD and then um, they, they are taking this reaction they are reaching out to farmers with that as well because a lot of farmers today now nowadays having the uh, cell phone and all these things so i i am aware of that and yes you are you are right so so i ekta kotha je ekhane onek question amar bhalo lagbe but sobche bhalo lagbe je jar kache science but entomology je sikechi tar kach theke question pe amar khub bhalo lagbe really really thank you thank you thank you so you sir ke sath the thanks sir ji one আমরা অনেক প্রায় দশ দশটা এখন বাজে নটা পঞ্চাশ বাসে চলেছে আমরা বলছি এখনো মানে শেষ করতে ভালো লাগছে না শেষ তো করতেই হয় তো আবার আমাদের কালকে আমাদের জয়েন করতে হবে সকাল আটটা থেকে মধ্যে আমাদের তো সবাই কালকে আটটার মধ্যে আমাদের লক্ষ্য আটটা আগে মানে পৌনে আটটায় আমাদের লক্ষ্য নিতে হবে আর অ্যানাউন্সমেন্ট রয়েছে যারা আজকে ইউটিউবে লাইভ ছিল দেখেন ডাইরেক্টলি ক্যান জয়েন টু দা গুগল মিট অলরেডি ওকে সো দ্যাটস ইট যদি আমাদের আর কিছু স্যার যদি অবশ্যই হাজার রয়েছেন আমাদের প্রেসিডেন্ট রয়েছেন স্যার যদি কিছু বলেন আমি আই উই ক্যান দেন কনক্লুড দ্যাট টুডে সেশন আই ফ্রম মাই সাইড আই থ্যাঙ্কস অল দা লোকি স্যারস এগেইন সুপ্রভাত স্যার আমাদের কাছে স্যার সবাই রয়েছেন আমাদের স্যার রয়েছেন আমার ভিস স্যার ছিলেন এবং সবাইকে থ্যাঙ্কস জানাচ্ছি দেন ওভার টু প্রেসিডেন্ট স্যার ওকে ডক্টর হাজার প্লিজ আমি জানাই আর দেবদা একবার দেবদাকে সবাই যা দেবদা আর জুনিয়র আছে দেবদা টিমটা যা পুরো একটা লাইভ করে দেবদা যা শুনতে আছে দেবদাকে অবশ্যই থ্যাঙ্কস দিতে হবে দেবদা রয়েছে হ্যালো হ্যালো थैंक यू थैंक यू মানস ফর ইওর এক্সেলেন্ট ডেলিভারেশন আমাদের ধন্যবাদ অনেক थैंक यू আমাদের প্রথম যেটা আপনি প্রেসিডেন্ট to all the participants and the speakers of this seminar particularly professor nimai saha our honorable vice chancellor our honorable teacher professor is rai our beloved brothers like lokmaran and all no, no. the like approval oshi onupam manos asista all well, i thank all of them for their kind deliberation and participation and as it is about 10 pm and uh, yes <laughs> and we are very hungry to take our <laughs> dinner therefore i conclude this session with thanks to all thank you all thank you tomorrow 7:45 tomorrow 7:45 is our login tomorrow 8:45 7:45 google meet link okay
Thank you, sir. Good night. So I, so I guess all of these, so I guess all of these. Thank you, Manas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Manas. 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 माने मानव जा सर मानव जा सुना लो ताते टैक्सन ऑफिस जरा आगे क्या बढ़ी जाए ना आर किसी को 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 सर आपना रिटायरमेंट तो हो जाएगा तो तो दिन चिंता कर देना आप इसे दांत में ठीक है थैंक थैंक यू मनोज आप इसे दांत थैंक यू लोकी लोकी बाय बाय यस थैंक यू थैंक यू लोकी दा थैंक यू ओके ओके इधर पार्टी से ना गए I want to be in there.